and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. 2 Timothy 1.8 May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Blessings, everyone. Grace and peace to all the saints, all the leaders coming in. We bless the Lord for you all. Please share as you come in and tag someone who you believe may have a testimony or need to hear one. I'm excited to be with you all this evening. This is our Tuesday night testimony live here at Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, and the North American Washington Council. We are restoring the old paths of testimony service. Testimony service is still being restored in the house of the Lord. And for that, I am so grateful. The testimony of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy. And we bless the Lord. For everyone that's coming in, we're excited to be in the presence of the Lord with all the saints once again. Type in the comment section, it's testimony time in the house of the Lord. Amen. Type your testimonies. Type your praise reports. Let us testify of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Please share. As you come in, type at followers and highlight at everyone. Tag someone who you believe may have a testimony or may need to hear one. We bless the Lord for you, Apostle. Lord is good. Glad to be on with you, First Lady. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. We bless the Lord for you. The Lord Let us worship so the Lord good. through our testimonies. Amen. Amen. He is worthy of all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. <laughs> Amen. Come on in. I'm excited to hear hear what the testimonies will be on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Please continue to all the glory. Oh, great. No, don't worry, it's me. Don't worry about it. All the glory. Oh, great. I'm sharing it on. You bless the Lord for everyone coming in. Bishop E's in with us tonight, First Lady. We bless yes. the Lord for you, sir. And uh, Bishop Sheba, our great yes. bishops over at Dominion House yes. of Restoration. Yes. We bless the Lord for Sister Shandy's in with us. Sister Shandy, we just bless the Lord for you. And we uh, thank the Lord for you and, and little sister Samar and the whole entire family on the West Coast there. We just bless the Lord for you all coming in on tonight. So excellent uh, to have you in with us tonight. And uh, we just bless the Lord for Tuesday night testimony okay. service. We were went a little bit over uh, in uh, with uh, Apostle Dr. Rhonda. Um, and our KBC class, our Kingdom Bible Study class. Amen. And so we just bless the Lord. The Holy Ghost was moving powerfully. Amen. The Word was rich and powerful, and we just bless the Lord on tonight for His grace and His mercy. So we're in for Tuesday night testimony service. I'm in with my PRT, and I bless the Lord for First Lady Amen. being so diligent and being on her Amen. post and uh, I'm doing a little sharing here, Saint, so uh, somebody else has the opportunity to come in. 
and hear the word of the Lord. So we just bless the Lord on tonight. We're given a few more minutes for everybody to come in before we kind of take off here. If you have testimonies, please go ahead and share them. And um, we are, uh, if you have anybody the Lord has laid on your heart that needs prayer, let's go ahead and put them in the chat. Anybody that, any situations that need prayer, let's go ahead and put those in the chat because we are going to um, close in prayer. So we want to make sure that we have uh, everyone who needs prayer in the chat. The Lord is moving mightily. He is answering uh, his children in the North American Watchman's Council. And we bless the Lord for him answering because there's many passages of scripture where the Lord uh, told old Israel that, you know, when they called upon him, there were times he said, I'm not going to answer, let your idols answer. And so we never take for granted that the Lord, um, uh, and we never take for granted the Lord answering us when we come to him in prayer so critical to understand that so we just bless the lord on tonight we're allowing for they're still they were still in prayer uh when we left uh the kbc class so we're going to give a few moments for a few more saints to come in tonight and um and so we're endeavoring to start on time because we know that everybody on the East Coast is about an hour later. Evangelist Akithia, we just bless the Lord for you, ma'am. So excellent to have you in with us tonight. We thank the Lord for you, Brother Kale, and all the entire family here in Dallas, Texas. So excellent to have you in with us on tonight. Listen, what a time we had with Evangelist Lakeithia Lockridge ministering to us last night, yes. First Lady. Amen. Oh, my Lord. The yes. Holy Ghost moved so powerfully. Yes, so if powerful. somehow you missed yes. that broadcast last night, I want yes. to thoroughly, thoroughly yes. encourage you to go and to get that broadcast. Go on Lakeithia Lockridge. Type it in on Facebook. Yes. That video is on her page, and uh, and we just said, what a powerful word last night, holiness, holiness. or hell. Oh, I'm telling holiness you, First Lady, holiness, holiness or hell, hell. Holiness, holiness or hell. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. And Evanna Sakethia preached so powerfully last night. I was yes. so kingdom proud of her as her yes. brother in the yes. Lord and as her apostle. I just was so just so blessed i mean just the yes. holy ghost holy was so powerful last night so that um you just it was undeniable and it's that way when we're in yes. gatherings uh all our gatherings through the week and as she yes. so poignantly put it last night we got service every night for you and yes. we do yes. and there's no that i'm telling you and the whole i'm telling you first lady and i love what the old saints used to say yes. they used to get up and testify and so first thing they say is there's no other place I'd rather be than in the house of the Lord and the preachers would get up and they'd start their messages with that so I just bless the Lord on tonight it's so it was so powerful if you miss that message you want to go and get that message trust me when I tell you I wouldn't even steer you in the wrong direction at all because the Holy Ghost would be on me um, such a powerful message. Holy Ghost was truly with us last night and in the midst of us. And what a mighty time we had in his presence, just hearing the word of the Lord. And I'm telling you, First Lady, I never get tired of hearing the word of the Lord. Every time I hear a Holy Ghost preacher, it's like the first time I've heard it, the thrill and the blessing and just the privilege and honor to be in the presence of the Lord, to hear his word. Apostle Dr. Rhonda Ferguson in with us. Apostle, we just bless the Lord for you, ma'am. So excellent to have you in with us tonight. We bless the Lord for you and 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 Prophet Christian and, and just the entire family family so excellent to have you with us sister angelina murphy is in with us first lady yes. and sister angelina we bless the lord for you and um uh brother Cy ear and little sister ivy grace yes. we just love you guys and we honor the entire family so excellent to have you with us tonight first lady we got we got a few in with us now i think we can take off and run down the road here wherever we're going saints if you have a testimony please 
Uh, if you'd like to share live, please let us know. We will send you the link. Everybody in Cox community, you have the link in the hub. So if you'd like to come in, Bishop Sheba is in with us now, ma'am. You know we always honor you when we see either you. If we see you, we honor uh, Bishop V. If we see him, we honor you. So we always got our bishops covered. But it's so excellent to see you uh, tonight, ma'am. We love and honor you both greatly. Sister Barbara Stevens, so excellent to have you with us on tonight, ma'am. Uh, we bless the Lord for Sister Barbara. And... Um, what a mighty testimony from Sister Barbara last yes. week. She just really yes. blessed us. We were endeavoring to have another young lady on tonight. It didn't work out that way. It's okay. But because, listen, regardless of who shows up and who doesn't, yes. we're going to do what the Holy Ghost has called us to do. I have never been attached to men. I've never made ministry about men. My service is to men, but it's for the Lord. So as long as the Holy Ghost send me and him and I show up, everything else is copacetic as far as I'm concerned. And it's always been that way. So we just bless the Lord on tonight. First Lady, where are we going? We got a few in tonight, more coming in as we go along. And I'm just excited. If you have live, if you like to come in, share a live testimony, yes, please we'll let us know. Right we'll send the link because this testimony service is for all of us. Yes, First Lady and I do prepare in the presence of the Lord with oracles. But the goal here is to have the TNT filled with testimonies, not necessarily. We receive oracles all week long and they're going to be powerful because that's what the Holy Ghost does. But testimony service is really for all of us. It's really for us. So if you have testimonies, please share. I'm monitoring the Facebook chat. That's why you see me looking off the screen a lot of times because I'm monitoring the chat. I'm here. I can, you know, I'm comfortable. I can do it all. But I'm monitoring the chat because I don't want to miss your testimonies. or I don't want to miss your comments because we have a lot of powerful saints in here that say powerful things that need to go in the atmosphere. So if you have a testimony and you want to share it in that live Facebook forum, please do so. We will read it live. If you want to come in and share live, please let us know. We'll send you the link. If you're uh, if you're in with Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, you know where your hub is. The link is in there. You could just come straight on in. Minister Latak McLenn, we bless the Lord for you and Brother Antoine, the entire family there, all of the children. So excellent to have you in with us tonight. And we bless the Lord. Uh, Minister Latasha led us before the throne of grace as we closed out mighty woman of god the holy ghost just shines brightly through her so powerful when she's praying her words just fall with tremendous weight in the holy ghost and that's what we need when you pray there ought to be tremendous weight so you know how that happens it's not just you know many people when we're young in the lord what we want to do is get the right combination of words that comes with spending time with the holy ghost but but what also comes with spending time with the Holy Ghost that a lot of people are missing is the type of intimacy that brings heaviness, a heavyweight stature to your words, that when you begin to pray, demons tremble and they leave the room, that when you pray, heaven, the heavenlies begin to move and principalities and powers begin to be unseated. Angels begin to descend and go to work on behalf of the saints. We have to know how to get on the altar until the heavyweight Wait, firepower of the Holy Ghost comes in the room when you're praying. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. You got to be able to pray where the Spirit of the Lord falls heavyweight in the atmosphere. Come on, you ought to be able to declare a word after prayer. You ought to be able to hear from heaven and be able to declare a word that begins to break chains and destroy yokes and, and, and cast down principalities and powers and destroy bondages. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. And we bless the Lord because when Minister Latasha is praying, I'm telling you, her words fall with heavy weight. And that is from spending time on the altar. You say, how can I get it, man of God? I just told you, spend time on the altar. Mm -hmm. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Brother Sire, we bless the Lord for you. We love you, Sister Angelina. We honor the entire family. Little Sister Ivy Grace, we just bless the Lord for you. We're blessing the Lord for you. When Sister Angelina came in, you know, when we see one, we're going to bless the other and, and conversely. So we bless the Lord for you on tonight. And I'm telling you, we have got to power the altar. I'm in First Lady last night, you know, in the presence of the Lord. And there was a scripture earlier in the day. I was talking to you and I opened up my Bible, not paying attention. And I didn't look down yet. But when I did, I had a strong unction. My Bible felt open right to a place and I had a strong unction not to go past that scripture so I bookmarked it 
I waited till prayer that night. We're in the midnight hour. I love it because King David talks often about that midnight hour. Some powerful things go on in the midnight hour with the Lord. And I'm in there and the Lord begins to open up this scripture and begins to show me what is out ahead of us shortly and every and, and we're prophesying and i shared with the saints that every time we reach august since 2020 the lord begins to open up the prophetic portal wide widely and all of a sudden a great outpouring a prophetic word begins to come forward and it's specifically designed to guide us into the new year and it starts to flow that oil starts to flow heavily in the month of august but especially it comes down like niagara falls in september and then it just builds until we get to december and then december that portal usually closes because january 1st you know we're all waiting on the next plague to show up in the world this has not ceased to be since the lord day the lord calls us to prophesy and so the lord uh, in true fashion we're in the month of august and Bishop V and I were talking a, 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 a couple of days ago, and I said to him, and I and I reminded us of this again that 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 we're in that time now, and so we're going to need all night prayer and shut in. Bishop and I, the Holy Ghost has been speaking uh, to him, and you remember we had 21 days in the midnight hour with Bishop V in Dominion House yeah. of prayer yeah. and of oracles, yeah. and what a blessed yeah. time we had. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. And uh, the, the bishop led us 21 days at midnight, at midnight, listen, King David said, at midnight, I will rise to give you praise because of your righteous judgment. I am a companion of all them that fear the Lord and of them that keep his precepts. For 21 days, we rolled, We were in the midnight hour with Bishop V and Dominion House of Restoration. And he and the Holy Ghost did not, night after night, his perfection appeared in his oracles. And we got those oracles. Sister Trudy, we just... um. We just bless the Lord for you, ma'am. So excellent uh, to see you on tonight. 21 days. That's it, First Lady of Transformation. We were truly transformed, by the way. This was not playtime. Playtime's over in the church. This was live and direct. And you're absolutely right, Minister Latasha. It was fire. It was fire and then some more fire on top of the fire. It was a raging inferno because, you know, we had 21 days to keep throwing that wood on the fire. And every night, the Holy Ghost sent Bishop V at midnight. And he's throwing them logs on that fire man by by day i think we may by day 10 it was burning hot super hot by day 15 i mean you know more the, the more days that went on i mean it was making the hair stand up uh, you were getting glory bumps uh, you know uh in in the short in the short distance there so by the time we got 21 days i mean you're like almost needing to get in the holy ghost emergency room you know so uh, so powerful. So we were speaking and, you know, we got all night shut in coming soon. The Holy Ghost is calling for it. He began to speak to, um, he began to speak to uh, Bishop V on this manner. And I said, Bishop, we're going to North Carolina. Uh, when we came back from New York, the Holy Ghost called us into an all-night prayer and shut in. Shut in. One reason is for restoration, you know, because you go and you're pouring out, and we were serving. We were, uh, we were. Listen, we weren't in the most hostile place that we've ever been, but we certainly weren't in a friendly one. Uh, going to the three parks that we went to, and um, so we just thank the Lord. We got all-night prayer and shut in coming after we come back from North Carolina, and I believe the Lord is going to touch the bishops hard he's going to lead us in and uh but stay prayerful stay open because you know the lord will speak to any one of his servants and don't be afraid that if the lord lays something on your heart bring it bring it forward bring it to us let us know holy ghost is speaking this to me he will alert us and give us understanding of the time when these things should be. Brother Leon Taylor, we bless the Lord for you. Sister Trudy, we thank the Lord for you, ma'am, and your husband, Reese, and all of the um, children there. And um, and we just bless the Lord for you being in with us tonight. And so excellent to have you with us. 
and uh, we just bless the Lord for you, ma'am. And uh, Brother Jamie Henry, we bless the Lord for you, sir. Brother Leon, again, Taylor, we bless the Lord for you. So excellent to see you, Brother Leon. We've been praying for you around, or around the clock, not because there's anything wrong, but just because the Holy Ghost has brought you before us. You know, saints, it's good to know. Uh, I reach out a lot of times, and this is from the old path, and the Holy Ghost will bring people before me, and I'll reach out, and I'll give them, I'll send them a text message, I'll send them an oracle, I'll send them some, whatever the Holy Ghost commands, and I will let them know, hey, you're on the mind of the Lord. And, and this is what the Holy Ghost was talking to us about. Do you, can we get in prayer on the altar where the Holy Ghost can say, hey, call your brother and sister, reach out to them, send them a message thinking about you today. You're on the Lord's mind. The old saints used to do this. You're on the Lord's mind. They drop a phone call. I was there many times. I heard the my bishop say it, my father say it, uh, my first lady say it, um, all the mothers, all the fathers of the faith. And they would call and say, hey, you're on the Lord's mind. He brought you before me while I was praying. And uh, listen, I love those old saints. I love those old paths. I miss them so much. And I can't wait to see them again in that glorious day when we go marching in with the saints. Um, and so, you know, they used to say, hey, the Lord, uh, the you're on the mind of the Lord. How did they know that? Because the Lord was bringing their brother and sister before them in prayer. He does the same thing with me. I'll see your faces. I'll reach out to you. I'll send whatever the Lord tells me to send to you. I reach out to I want you to know you're on the Lord's mind and you're on my mind. We've got to learn and mature to go on the altar that every time we go on there, it's not, it's okay to ask for what you really need and even some things that you want. But I assert with you that I believe the majority of our time in prayer should be spent. Okay, you're going to need some time to build up in spiritual power. That can happen necessarily without you asking. Just being in the presence of the Lord will do that. It'll refresh you. It'll renew. You don't necessarily have to ask for all those things. The reason we ask normally is because something is touching our conscience. It's not because the Holy Ghost needs us to ask him to fill us with power. When we're in, when you're in his presence, all those things uh, will be factored in and will, and will, and, and the Holy Ghost will do in and for you. So the issue is, we ask a lot of things because our conscience is, is pricked and not by the Holy Ghost, it's pricked by our own heart for a myriad of reasons. Don't have time to get into that tonight. And so, but the longer you go with the Lord, this is what the word of the Lord truly means when it says perfect love cast out fear. A lot of times it's areas of fear that begin to prick our conscience. And so we get fearful. I'm not full of the power of the Lord. I'm not spirit filled. I'm not this. I'm not that. So you will ask. It's okay. But as you mature, you know just coming into the presence of the Holy Ghost, you're going to be refreshed. I've never been in the presence of the Holy Ghost and not been refreshed. Not, not, and along with that, it's not, and, and, and it's so powerful because you could be refreshed. But even when I'm in a pit, the times before I really learned this thing, I was in a pit. The Lord would lift you out of what the old saints used to call that miry clay. He would lift you out of that pit. He will lift you out of it. Now, if he can lift you out of a pit, okay, and 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 you're in there and you're saying, Lord, I need your help, and Lord, I need this, I need if he has power to lift you out of that pit, then it has got to be an easy thing when you're not in the pit and you're coming in there and it's just refreshing and renewal and revival and fresh oil and fresh fire and fresh wind and fresh power. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. There are a lot of things we ask for the sake of conscience, but it's not that the Holy Ghost is necessarily pricking you to that. It's that we have to come to a deeper place of trust and understanding that when we're in the presence of the Lord, all those things are going to be added unto me. You say, Apostle, that can't possibly be true. It is. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. If you seek, that seeking is not asking, saints, because we have other scriptures says, seek, ask, and knock. So, seek, ask, and knock, seek, and then we have ask, and then we have knock. Those are three separate, distinct measures in the presence of the Holy Ghost. So when we come into the presence of the Lord, he said, seek the kingdom of God first. That means enter my presence and seek my righteousness. Come on, you're coming in there with the expectation that the Lord is going to refresh you and renew you and revive you and empower you and give you fresh wind and fresh fire, fresh oil, all those wonderful things. He said, and all these things will be added unto you. In what? The seeking process. There's no need to ask because he said, I will do it in the seeking process. We have not matured to understand these things, but we are. And that's the point of the Holy Ghost bringing them. 
So the majority of our time in prayer really needs to be spent in ministering to the Lord. Lord, what is on your heart? What is on your mind? Do my brothers and sisters need intercession on today? Lord, is there anybody that needs an encouraging word? Father, is there anybody that needs you? Lord, something from you, whatever that is, put me in their path or put them in my path. I'll be faithful, my prayer is, to dispense your wisdom and your glory, whatever you have for them. And so we're supposed to go in there and the majority of time in prayer needs to be the burden of the Lord and the burden of the Lord. You remember Sunday we received that when you start down this path of shipwreck faith, the beginning stages are a crisis of faith. Then you start to lose three things critically, a loss of spirit-filled care and concern. When you're going in prayer, you have no spirit-filled care and concern for, for you got selfish concern. And we're not talking about, because you can have spirit-filled care and concern for yourself. But a lot of times, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, we're talking in prayer about what the Apostle James said is praying amiss so that we can consume it upon our lust. We need to know the difference. We got to be sharp here in the Holy Ghost. Are we praying amiss for things that we're just going to consume upon our lust? Because that's not the kind of prayer the Holy Ghost is calling us to. The kind of prayer he's calling us to is to have spirit-filled care and concern about our household, okay, and about our brothers and sisters. But first and foremost, Lord, what is it that you want today? What's on your heart and mind today? What do I need to carry out today? Because I trust if I take care of your business, you'll take care of mine. I'm talking about when you mature in this thing down the road a ways, okay? And, uh, and, and you say, when can I start this? No better time than now. Okay, so the next time you go in prayer, ask the Holy Ghost to start switching your concern, your spirit-filled caring concern, and start taking it off of you because you're trusting the Lord is going to add all these things to you as you begin to pick up his mind and his heart about his burden. And that's the second loss. When you know your faith is starting to be shipwrecked, you have a loss of burden. And the third one that is, and they are all flowing together. One leads to the other one. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. And so, and so the third one is a loss of the leading of the Lord. It's no mystery. And so you go from a crisis of faith to a full-on shipwreck and disintegration of your faith simply because we're coming into the presence of the Lord. When we pray amiss, you're already entering that process. Come out in the fire power of the Holy Ghost. It is important to know. Even the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. It is important to know how to be in the presence of the Lord and what you're supposed to be doing. It's important to know that you have to pray according to the will of the Lord because he's not going to answer what is not of his will. I can tell you right now, he's not going to do it. He's going to leave you sitting there and the Holy Ghost is going to have to work with you until you figure it out. Come on in the fire power of the Holy Ghost. He's going to have to work with you till you see it is what I mean by figure it out. I don't mean you untwisting the Rubik's Cube there. But the Holy Ghost is going, you're going to have to stand there till you can hear him. And what the Holy Ghost, this I know many people, it's a spirit in there with you, but it's not the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you why. Because the stuff that you're praying and all that amiss you're praying, the Holy Ghost unctions us to pray. Many of us are going in prayer with no unction. You're just going in there to say what you want to say. But have you ever have you ever experienced where the Holy Ghost leads you into prayer? I don't go into prayer because I think it's a great ideal. I go into prayer because the Holy Ghost unctions me in there, leads me in there, draws me in there. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. That's so critical on tonight. Sister Robin Craig, we just bless the Lord for you, ma'am. So excellent to see you. Always a blessing when you can be in with us. So First Lady, where are we going tonight? Just dropping some gems here in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. You know, I like to say me and the Holy Ghost are still magnetic after 31 years and I'm still on the mic and when I was in the world we say hey we're rocking the mic I'm still rocking that jokers just for King Jesus now and not for my own worldly pursuits and fame and fortune and all the rest of that and um, I don't even know if that I didn't want fame or fortune in the rap world I just wanted a mission you know so 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 I, I never left the mic I just switched teams that's all I did I switched to that Holy Ghost team and I'm still on the mic all these years later and I'm I'm still rocking that joker in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, just not for worldly ambition and carnal pursuits. Sister Diane Clark, we just bless the Lord for you, ma'am. So excellent. To, it sure is the true Sister Diane. And I bless the Lord that I'm not doing all that stuff anymore, you know. And um, 
It's so interesting. I have been in the Lord so long. You know, I hear secular music. It's like I don't even hear it. I I, I don't know. It, it, it has got to be a move of the Holy Ghost in my spirit because I will hear things. And, you know, you used to hear it when you was early on in your salvation. And then, you you know, it would be like you would start humming the words a little bit and then you catch yourself. But you know what? Honestly, I hear all, I hear secular. I don't hear it all the time. But whenever somehow, and I, you know, usually when you're in the marketplace somewhere, they're playing something, and um, I hear it. It's like I don't even hear. It. It's like my ear is not even tuned into it. And a lot of if you were to ask, you hear that somebody I, we were sitting, we were sitting and uh, we uh, first lady was uh, getting her nails done. We were sitting there and and the lady she said, "You hear that." Uh, the nail tech, you hear that? And I said, mm, no. And I didn't know what she was talking about. She said, oh, the music, you hear the button? And I said, no, actually, I didn't. And because I, my frequency, see, my ear, the, the word of the Lord, I'm looking at it today again, and the Holy Ghost has had me here for a minute now. And you look at Isaiah, I believe it's, uh, let me not. Let me not, let me give you the exact chapter on this because I do not want to mess this up because it's so powerful. If you go to Psalms 45 and 1, you get my tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. And uh, if you go to Isaiah 50, though, you go to Isaiah 50, the Lord talks about having the tongue of the learned that you know how to speak a word in due season to them uh, that are weary, and then he wakens our ear morning by morning as what? The ear of the learned. Bishop Sheba brought this up last night. A uh, powerful word that was ministered some time ago is we ought to not have itchy ears. Come on in the fire power of the Holy Ghost. We get that from Bishop Timothy. But we ought to have burning ears, which we get from the prophet Jeremiah. Come on in the fire power of the Holy Ghost. And, um, and so Isaiah, the 50th chapter, and you go uh, right at the fourth and the fifth verse, Okay, and then after that, you start getting into the messianic portion of that scripture. Uh, so you could see that the Jesus' death on the cross was already foretold right there. It's it's a messianic passage of scripture when you get into verse six, because it starts talking about them spitting on him, plucking the hair out of his beard. That can only apply to one person. And so we were talking Sunday about Christ being formed in you by baptism of the Holy Ghost and formed in you by the scriptures. Okay, and so you can see that there. All right, so. Sister Trudy said, that has changed for me too, Apostle. I used to not be able to hear it and not sing. Now I can hear it and pay no attention. This happened to me at Bob's Furniture this past weekend. No, she didn't hit us with Bob's Furniture. <laughs> I remember Bob's Furniture. And uh, and uh, that is, that, that. I guess that is a plug anyway. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Hey, you've got to have something to sit on. So if it's Bob, Marky, or Joan, who cares? As long as you get your furniture, I could care less. And uh, when I was in the Tri-City Upstate area, what was it, Taft? I think I was a Taft man. I think that's where I got all of my furniture all those years from was Taft. I loved Taft. I'd roll up on him, and they'd Did give me. Uh, it, it well, it I don't know. I don't think that chain is across the country, but it, it is one of the biggest, big, bigger stores there. And um, and so I'd roll up in there. I was there so many years. I by the time uh, what I would deliberately do is I'd come in and throw like half down on it, and then I'd leave it there for a minute, and then two, three sales would pass by. So I'd get I'd get something for you know seven thousand dollars for three thousand or thirty five hundred, you know, because I just left it in there to the sale they had to they'd have a blue tag sale and a green tag sale and so i'd leave that joker in the next thing you know i'm paying half price for that joker and then i you know and i'd go in there and i'd throw my veterans discount on there too you know and they and um yeah that's another one ray moore and flanagan which was down the street both of them were on central and so uh we just uh <laughs> we just it's we just but so listen i i'll tell you i'll tell you this sister trudy I didn't have no expensive furniture when my kids were little either, even though they didn't fool around on it, but I wasn't taking no chances either, you know, cause, cause, uh, but you know, I limited all that because my kids wasn't allowed to eat in the living room or no other room. They had to be at the dining room table. So my furniture made it, but uh, the reason I really did it is because I, I, I needed a whole kids cost money. Okay. I don't know, you know, in case anybody didn't realize that. All my new parents' kids cost money, and the older they get, they cost more. Okay, so 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 you have to 
you have to be a wise steward. So what I did, I wouldn't put no Jordans on these Joker for your foot to outgrow it in two months. You, I'm not going to put you in a Walmart special, but you're going to be about medium stroke. That's going to be good enough because your feet is outgrowing this stuff. So I didn't do all of that. And so, um, and so, uh, no elder vanilla, they're not. And, um, <laughs> the more of them you have, the more it starts to be a labor of love and some days, if you blink too fast, it feels like slavery. I'm just going to put it out there for our newer parents so you can know. And uh, parental advisory uh, uh, on this uh, job, you're going to need it, okay? You're going to need some money. So as a wise steward, I took the money out of the shoe bin and out of the fashion bin and out of the, fur I mean, I took it out of the furniture bin so I could put it in school supply bin and uniform bin and, you know, and by uniforms, I mean, they played sports, so you need money for that. And that stuff is expensive. These cleats sometimes are 100 to 200 bucks, depending on what you're looking. And that's assuming your child doesn't, isn't Bigfoot, you know. So, you know, if your child has some big feet, um, my kids relatively had big feet, but they weren't. I wear a 14. They weren't that big. So I, I was fortunate there. But, um yeah, but you know, if if they if they start getting supersized, that's even more money, you know. So I'm telling you, Sister Angelina, it's 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 gonna cost some money, and the more you have of them, the more money it cost okay and i bet you sister shandy know because her boys are playing ball and when you start especially football is not a cheap sport they do give them uniforms and stuff but they need a whole lot of under armor and gear mm -hmm. and then you know you gotta pay because they want to go to prom and they want to go to this and that and you know and and you want them yeah you want them to participate reasonably you know, so you got to listen. I had to make all kind of money, but I thank the Lord too because I was determined. First Lady and I grew up in a hellhole, and I was determined for my kids to not have to deal with that. And we we did it. We did it. So we sacrificed. And every dime I had went to them. Now growing up in that hellhole, I did, and going to school where you got to pass through metal detectors every day, and we're strapped every day. Just ask somebody about Detroit; they'll tell you. Next time, prophetess. Um, Elena's in here and, and Minister Pat asked them. They were right there with me, mm -hmm. uh, Brother Corey, all of them. So, you know, every day you're strapped because it's either you or them and you get yourself in a ton of trouble. So I didn't want my kids growing up. like. And I thank the Lord that I was standing there. And this is my testimony tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I was standing there one time looking at my sons um, <clears throat> and there are four of them standing with my father. And I remember thinking, I bless the Lord that my sons are like my father and not so much like me because they're they're pliable, they're nice young men, they're they're uh, intelligent, um, but they're really they're really just nice young men. Every young lady that's gone to the prom with them or in their younger days or 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 you know uh uh they dealt with just really just really speaks to that fact and i bless the lord for that my daughter's the same um but they're not like me my father's like that he's one of the nicest men i've ever met he's no nonsense but he's extremely nice extremely patient and i'm none of those things apart from the holy ghost i'm hard edge i'm rough rugged and raw would be all the adjectives i've described but because i had to grow up um in survival mode and uh, and do it where me and my siblings could come home every day. Many of my friends are gone by murder. All of my friends are gone by murder. I don't. I didn't start having friends dying to, from something else until we were forty, I think. You know, so it took a long time. I think the first time was about thirty-five. So before that, I, I'm still asking about friends that I hadn't seen in a while, and they're telling, "Oh, he got murdered. He got murdered. He got murdered. He got murdered." So even our older age, it didn't change. So you know, I didn't want my sons to be like that. So my testimony tonight is, the Lord blessed me. That was one of my greatest prayers on the altar at that time. The Lord is still blessing my children. And you know, as parents, we always want to ask the Lord to bless our children. And I ask the Lord, cover my children with anointing that's on my life till they can accept you for themselves. That anointing is still covering them. Um, it didn't, my children, I have not been down to the jail with them. I have not, it, I've been blessed to, to father these five children because 
um, I really had it easy. And I, it's not because of anything I did. It's because of just what the Holy Ghost has done. But you do have to partner with him. So I don't throw myself under the bus. I partnered with him, but I praise the Lord for his power that I had it extremely easy having five children. I went down to the school twice I can remember. And thankfully, neither one of my children were in uh, were, were the were the culprits. It was other people trying to jump on them. And I did tell my children, if somebody jumps on you, I don't want you in a casket. Do what you got to do. I'll defend you when I get there. Yeah. And I did too. When I walked up in there, they told me one time suspending both my children. I said, you're not suspending neither one of them. So when you got three girls jumped on my, my, my daughter and they just assumed she didn't know what she was doing. Unfortunately, they didn't know her father's a Marine and she put uh, several of them in, um, in the emergency room uh, and to in intensive care that's going to be what it is because they they assumed they were just going to jump on her now my daughter died we'd be talking about something different here okay so i told my children i taught my children like my mother taught us don't be bullies but defend yourself i don't want you laying there dead and so we did we did it at the highest order too got us in a lot of trouble and we had to spend a lot of money keeping ourselves out of prison uh, but we were not going to let people fool with us. I thank the Lord I'm saved now because I wasn't saved back then. And uh, and my son, same thing. Two guys jumped on him over a girl. Unfortunately, they learned the hard way not to do that twice. So you want to suspend my son? Thankfully, they had him on camera because that was the time they started having cameras in the school. And uh, they didn't suspend either one of my kids. I told them, hey, if the parents got a problem, let's call everybody in the office. I talked to them face to face. Oh, no, Mr. Cox, we don't need to. Okay, then make it go away. And they did, too. Um, you're not going to. So I bless the Lord. I, I taught my children, don't put your hands on anybody and you be nice to everybody. And you but if somebody's that dumb, do what you have to do. I'll take you slack up when I get there. And uh, thankfully, that happened twice. Um, but my children are alive and well, my grandchildren and my anointing still cover them. Saying, so when we get on the altar, if your children are not saved, your anointing can cover them. That's in your scriptures. OK, it's in the book of Corinthians. Right around the seventh chapter, you can start, new believers. Your anointing can cover them only so long, but it can for a good length of time. But they need to accept the Lord Jesus before they take their last breath. So even though our anointing covers, we still have a duty and an obligation and a ministry to tell them. Okay, so we have to do, oh, I'm telling you, Sister Barbara, they'll try it. They will try it. I remember, um, I'm not going to tell the full business, but one of my friends who I, we've known each other a long time and I absolutely love her son, some little girl starts crying rape. Wrong answer. And the Holy Ghost gave me the sermon. I said, we are not. And they're like, oh, you know, I said, nope. We're not doing it. So the lawyer's like, oh, but I said, you need a new lawyer, and we're not going that way. This, this, that, and the other. Went in there. The Holy Ghost worked marvelously. That little girl starts, she starts, and see, sometimes when you're in a courtroom, the old saints had it right. Jesus will be a lawyer in a courtroom. And I'm going to tell you something. When we got on our knees and I told all, all the saints were praying, the Holy Ghost said, tell them to pray in their prayer language. When we switch to our prayer language, Bishop V, First Lady, Elder Vanell, when we switched to our prayer language, all of a sudden, this little girl come up singing like a canary. I lied. I lied on him because of X, Y, Z. She starts telling the, the DA. She starts telling the, uh, the police. She starts telling her parents. Her parents are embarrassed. But guess what? Charges drop and walk right out of there. No problem. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. When the saints pray, heaven will move. The Holy Ghost will begin to move on our behalf, but I'm telling you, yeah, we have to keep our children covered because we remember, according to the scriptures, right around Isaiah, the 61st chapter, guess what? They are the seed of the righteous. And if the devil hates us, then you automatically know he hates the next generation. So we have to cover them. All right. So first lady, where are we going? Where are we going on tonight? I'm so excited to be in. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's testimony time in the house of the Lord. And we bless the Lord for all the saints coming in. Please share as you come in, all the new um, new people that are coming in. Please share the broadcast and continue to share your testimony in the chat. We bless the Lord for the demonstration of his power through our testimonies. <coughs> we bless the Lord for the demonstration. We need demonstration of his power through our testimonies. Bishop Barrow. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this evening to share your testimony with us. We bless the Lord for you and Bishop Sheba from Dominion House of Restoration. 
when you're ready to share your testimony, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Bishop Barrow. <laughs> Right. So. I'm trying to stay in. I'm trying to stay in. The she just, said, what are you, she just giddy and giggling, making the bishop laugh. He can't even get his right. testimony going. Um, you sound fine. You just you you sound you 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 messing your own self up over there. That's all right. That's why you got to let it ring out. See, you trying to harness it a little bit. Let it ring out. Let it ring out. Then it starts getting oblong. Then you're like, okay, now. Now, now, then, then you start. It starts. Uh, it starts getting old on you. You just got to put it out there. You know, yeah. got to put it out there. It starts getting old on you. Then you're. You don't even notice it after a while. You know. I'll be 50. Bishop, I'm excited. Yeah. You'll be fifty when you got a ways. You got a little ways to go, honey. Huh? Uh, you about you a couple years <laughs> out, honey. I'm, I'm there. I'm there in about two months. You're there. You got a couple <laughs> years. You're good. Okay. You're good. You're the young. You're the youngin of the crew. I'm gonna sound the same. You're you're older. Uh, I'm gonna uh, sound the same. No, listen. If you I'm put your voice, that's why I say let your voice yeah. ring out because it thickens your vocal cords, and so you will still sound feminine, but you will have weight. Them late. Listen to lady I'm preachers gonna... and singers. Their voices are weighty. They're still feminine. That's you hear Bishop nice. Sheba's voice. You hear Apostle's voice. That's from years of doing it, and uh, you know, but but you know. Um, yeah, yeah, you gotta let it ring out. That's why I, I, I know what you I know what you're looking for. That's why I be saying let you put your preaching voice on because it's gonna thicken you up a but little bit like, and you'll like lose I'm some yelling. of that. When I talk loud, I feel like I'm yelling at you. You, you look at Elder Vanell stun that Jerry curl the other night, that Jerry <laughs> juice the other night. <laughs> let your soul go. Boy, Boy we but it's dry. Back in the day. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you got to get that Jerry juice in your throat. Then it'll be right. lubricated. You know, you be right. good. But yeah, first lady, if you, that's why I say put your preaching voice on because you let it ring, your cords start thickening up and then they start getting, you start getting some weight there and it won't sound like that to you, you know. But, uh, I just start singing out loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You be singing. Oh, I sing with you all the time. We be singing around here because we be worshiping. Yeah, I mean so that's it, Minister. She said, preach, first lady. That's it. You got to right. preach it. Got to preach. You got to put it out there. See, so uh, I'm telling you, Sister Barbara, it's it's wild up in here, and uh, so uh, Bishop V, I'm excited to hear your testimony. Yes. I'm always excited to hear testimonies. I don't even know what they are. I don't even care. I'm just excited to that the Lord is doing something in somebody's life marvelously, and um, and doing something and blessing us. You know, Bishop, every week. I really seek the Lord. I really look for opportunities um, to serve in specific capacities mm -hmm. so I can have a testimony, right? Now, there's a myriad of testimonies, but I'm partial to the ones where the Lord uses me to bring his kingdom into somebody's life. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm always excited for testimonies because it means that the Lord is not only working in us, but he's working through us. So how's the Lord working? Um, I'm telling you, Elvin, now it's real. It's real. Mm -hmm. You know, it's real. And, um, uh, oh, Sister Barbara says she wants to come on with us. Sister Barbara, we, hey, Sister Barbara, if you go in that Cox Community Hub, you're in there. The, uh, the link is in there, ma'am. Yep, and I just posted it. Yep, it's in there. So, uh, where'd you post it? The no Cox Community. Yeah, it's in the Cox community, Sister Barbara. You have to scroll. So yeah, so if you go in that hub, Sister Barbara, yeah, it's yeah. right there. You can come on in, ma'am, straight. Mm -hmm. Just go to the Cox community hub because we put you in there, Sister Barbara, and you can come right in straight. Um, Bishop, what you have for us tonight? Because I'm excited to hear what the Lord's done in and through you, and uh, you know, so you got the floor, Bishop, wherever you want to take us. Amen. Thank you. It's always a pleasure and honor to come before God's people with a testimony. Oh, can I say this, Bishop? Yes, sir. I, I want you to talk a little bit about Evangelist Lake. I know, I know, I, I'm all over the place. Yeah, I, I, I want to talk about. I her wanted anyway. to know. Yeah, I wanted to know what you thought, how what you saw last night, what you was expect. I was that was so powerful. I said I got to ask Bishop. I even want to ask Elder. Like from your vantage point, what were you guys experiencing? All right, so I'll start. So first thing I do, I I I, I have some of the same uh, questions First Lady has with with just vocal uh, training and and etiquette because I have a lazy I have lazy habits because I haven't been 
in, in these type of roles. So I always said, Lord, she's in sales. If she's in sales, I would love to shadow her on a on a real estate deal because I guarantee it's probably not like what this is. Because I, I understand because when you're in sales, it's completely different. And I, I doubt unless she sells houses like that. I don't know. But that's just uh, my assessment. Of sales is probably completely different because I was the same way in business. Put me in front of business people. I'm like a. Uh, uh, well, the I don't. I'm, I'm like a cheetah, you know. But I know things back and forth. But it's in in ministry. You always feel like everybody is judging you because they judge you anyway. It's just a culture of judging. But it it's it's necessary for you to trust in the Lord. You got to trust in the Lord. Oh, can I can I ask this, Bishop? Yes. How sir. are they not judging you when you're at the corporate deal table or on a? On a business deal, they're judging you too. Judging I think, the, I think the, the difference is we pay more conscious attention to the church's judgment and we should pay a lot less. Actually, we shouldn't pay attention at all because our services to the Holy Ghost are for the Holy Ghost. So we don't pay conscious attention over here for another reason. But this, but the people sitting in front of you judge you. They're looking at, I mean, right. from the, and you, you and I know they say an interview. 80% of an interview, if not 85%, is the way you look. That's judgment right in the door. So the thing is, we're not conscious in the world of people judging us. We didn't, you know, you have family members and you're like, oh, you know, we get in the church. So we're going to have to investigate why is it when we come in the church, all of a sudden we get conscious of this. We're not conscious of a lot of things when we're in the world. We're conscious of how we look and a lot of it is selfish and what we're listening to, what we're driving. But we're not really conscious of people's judgment to that degree until we come into the church. People are judging you at that table. Trust me when I tell you. But I believe yeah. what it is is we know what's at stake on the table and it's tangible. And the untangibility, if you will, because we're not talking about physical silver and gold here, makes us much more conscious of people's judgment when it comes to the church when that should be the last place we're conscious because the lord said no man can judge the body of christ it's right there in the scripture so we should why are we so conscious when we come into the lord but not when we're in the world and i'm not saying we had none out there but not like we're seeing when we come in the church so i and that's because that's because I think one thing we have to get out of our mind is this is not a performance. See, when you're doing what you're doing and you're good at it, you're not really performing. You're just doing what you do. That's just in you to do it. You're gifted to do it. You do it. We come over here and we start getting performance minded. We need to lose that. And when you, and then you lose that by getting deeper on the altar and deeper into the training of the Lord and the gift of the Lord. You didn't, when we start our job, you didn't start with no training. They wouldn't even hire when they hire you. You're going to you're going to go through training, even if you were with a previous company. You have to learn exactly. It might not be as extensive, but you're going to have to learn the way this company, the way they want you to do it. Right. So you're right. Their process. So you're going to have to go through a little bit. I believe if we go power that altar deep, you start to really the Holy Ghost teach you how to work in your gift and how to carry it out. You start losing that. You start losing that because we all go through it. Uh, and then I think some of us just don't care at all. I just never cared about what people thought. I don't want to enter that in the equation because I, I was born like that. I, I never, I grew up never, I never sat and thought about what people thought about me. I care less. Um, everybody's not like that. So I don't want to put that, enter that in the equation. That is something the Lord blessed me with. What I do want to say is I do want to say we're performance based. Because, see, you have to start thinking about performance when you have no comfortability in the gift. When you can just do something and you're trained to do it, it's not a performance set. It's like, come on, let's get this work done and let's let's move on to what the Lord has next. That's that's how I am. It's like, I enjoy when I'm in here. I enjoy, but it's like, okay, Holy Ghost, we're prayed up, we're fired up, we're ready to go, let's do this. We get it done. It's not a performance. It's just who I am. It's what I do. It's in me. It's a gift working on the outside, as you brilliantly brought into our remembrance the other day. Uh, something on the inside, working on the outside. This old yes, thing she's yes, yes. about a change in yes. me, right? Yes. So it is really, it is really that, it is really, 
And I'm going to tell you what gets rid of that conscience, the, the deeper you drive in that altar. The very thing that many saints don't want to do. Because the reality is we say, well, you know, I, I, I this, I that. The first hurdle we got to jump is the willingness to want to be on the altar for long periods of time. Okay, and and I find it interesting if you have a problem with that, sir, ma'am, what do you think we're going to be doing when we go to heaven? We have all kind of ideologies about this, but the same Holy Ghost that's in you now, it's not going to be a different one when you get in the kingdom in that day when we're in the eternal. It's the same Holy Ghost. That's why the scripture says the powers of the world to come. We need to experience those powers here and now. And so I didn't have much altar time in the beginning of days, nor did I have scripture time. But the deeper, the more I yielded my will to that word and to that altar, the more stamina I got, the more I was made for it and built for it. <laughs> yeah. in, in other words, transformed yes. for it. Yeah. You got to be transformed for long yes. scripture time, yes. long altar time. You know, and I'm so glad I grew up seeing the old saints doing this, right? So, uh, now, ironically, Bishop, to your point, and I think this is a little bit hilarious, it gave me a chuckle when I saw it, um, first ladies in real estate, when these folks hired her recently, soon as she came on there, guess what they told her to do? The very thing she does in the ministry for here. It's not by chance and happenstance. The Holy Ghost wants you to do this, so he puts her on her secular job, if you will, in the same identical position as she is in her calling in the Lord Jesus Christ. So she's doing identically the same thing. And then in other areas of business, it's the same identical thing. So essentially, when the Lord does that to you, he is telling you something. He is telling you, I'm trying to transform you into this place. And all we got to do is yield. So um, you guys are gifted. The issue is let the gift roll in this sector. Yes. So let it because I, I if we get to some oracles tonight, we're gonna see it in the word of the Lord. It's if we get there. But go ahead, Bishop. Yeah, I have an answer. So I asked the Lord what that was because literally I, I was picked up speaking about the, the contrast between being unknown in business and knowing people in ministry and still not having the same type of of fear. That's why I asked. I wonder how she would be in real estate because there's a difference in confidence. When you're in business, you know your stuff back and forward. In ministry, if you don't know your stuff back and forward, it, it, it can lead you to gaps. That's the first thing. And the second thing is comparing yourself to other people, not understanding that it takes, it requires work. Now, it yes. requires the work that the Lord has made, not your work faith by works there's works that the lord has already designed for you to do not works that you just do what you want and tell god to bless it so i asked him because there was one time i was uh stationed in london and i didn't know anybody i wasn't afraid because it's, you know i'm not afraid of violence it's, it's a completely different country and i'm around i didn't know anybody there but i was confident in, hey who are you what do you do who are you what do you do who are you what do you do so i said lord how is it this way in business and then when I come into church, I'm not saying anything to anybody. I know people here and it's just this foreboding fear. Like I feel like everybody is judging me. Now, first, I had to understand that some people were. So part of it was the judgment in church because people aren't connected to the spirit. And so they look at what you're wearing, who you're with. Yes. What kind of words you have. But mm -hmm. then also the scripture, he oh, took golly, me to James. Yes. Right. He took me to James where uh, envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and all type of evil there. So yes. I was going into ministry self-seeking. Oh, I want to do this like <laughs> this. I want to be like this, like this. But I didn't start at level A. I want to look at, you know what? I'm up here with them. I'm going to, I want to be at level 10. And the Lord told me the reason why you don't have the same confidence is because you haven't put in the same work. And, on, and the sure. enemy wants to lead you to believe, it's the enemy wants to lead you to believe you can run up and there's no barriers to enter. And, and well, that's the business term, meaning you can just stand up and do what the preacher does. But right. this is, is a spirit filled operation. You have to be spirit filled. It's not about speaking. I can, right. I can quote the whole Bible and nothing moves. The Lord not right. grace anything.
anything. Yeah. And, yes, and that's just my natural work. So that's why I made the statement. I wonder how she is in real estate, because when you have your your uh, your when you're in sales, you have to know your stuff back and forward. So you, yeah. you spout it off with no issue. And it's no different with scripture. That's what I'm learning now. So that's why I ask questions. How do you do this? Because once I understand the mentality, I can then right. apply that in work situations. You don't know it's so scripture, true. but I'm giving you scripture. So true. And, and the result so is the same. The word is living. And this is what my testimony is today anyway. The word is living. And because we reduce the Lord to humanistic things, we want the Lord to bless us in our stuff like we're God and he's our servant. And when we come into ministry, it's, it's more of the same. So if you're her heralded by a leader, if apostle was to tell me, oh, you preach good and I just run off with that. What if he's having an off day? God forbid. Where's the spirit? Where am I trusting in the spirit? Right. Where am I trusting in the spirit? And sometimes God may put me in a position to where either I have to put aside my own desires. I have to seek him for others, which is a second part of my testimony is is. Uh, my prayer life changing when we had the the oracle of the seven days of of laying and asking the Lord to show you what your brothers and sisters are praying for to yes, pray yes. that not what you knew it took it, it's hours upon hours of prayer and I'm like Lord this is phenomenal because you're I'm not I'm no longer praying about what I want or the ministry I'm praying for people specifically and then you start learning what they need and want and guess what those things happen to come up in regular conversation so then you have access to personal information personal things and people and people will, they'll see you and know oh I'm I'm gonna do this but I know you have a word for me how do you know I don't even know that I have a word for you, but you it, but it's an expectation of the spirit and then people pull on you. But uh, I, I, I get to that part of my testimony. Second, Come on, day. Bishop, you're giving but, the keys, you're giving the keys out. <laughs> but Evangelist Akitia, listen. All right. This is my this is what the Lord was revealing to me first and foremost. And I coupled this with why I'm here, because you have to serve the Lord in some capacity to expect a greater end. Not yes. zero times anything is zero. Yes. So the platform is open. The pulpit is open. Come in and testify. Lord, every week I'm going to have a testimony until the greater testimonies come in. And they're, they're, I'm seeing it happen. I'm not I'm not far off. I'm not that far because the Lord told me he's going to do something that I can't get credit for. So how what place should I be in if I expect that to actually happen? Sitting at home? sitting on facebook no i'm live i'm gonna show up live and guess what the lord is doing things he's bringing people to me but i'll get into that secondarily uh evangelist um so what i saw I was it. the grace the grace of the north american watchman's council come on and grace what grace is is it's an in spite of power it's an in spite and i saw it flowing through evangelists so heavily yesterday so heavily you have to understand and know where you are if it's a hyper speeding up of the saints for maturity maturity and maturation then you have to get in a proper place so i wasn't shocked that evangelist akithia did what she did but i was right. I, I i expected it right and i right. don't know how it will look but when i saw i said lord this thing is because when you see the pattern and you do what where i'm at she's there Mm -hmm. I'm in places. She's there. And now look at the fruit. Wow. Yes. You can't just help him and say, oh, I'm going to do what Evangelist Akithia does. Come on, Bishop. You can't. Now, I call that a service of straightening. Like it was straightening, <laughs> straightening the whole day. Just straightening. It was <laughs> listen. Right. So she and even she took me back to the old school. The kids was talking. She's praying. Come in. You praying now. That reminds me of the old days. Come on. You and you. Come on. <laughs> I'm not proud like of it, that. but if they was praying, you would tiptoe around to not get caught because if they look up and you walk by, you being loud, come in. You're praying with us now, and it's not an option. You and you have come to on. act like you pray and put your head down. And and they had those ones that you knew prayed all day. Oh, wow. man, I got to sit for this whole prayer. She listen, <laughs> y'all talking while praying. Oh, you're praying now. Get in here, sit down. But that that caused the fear of the Lord. It's, it was a different time. It was Come a different on. time back then. It's a different spirit because now people hear us talking and think, oh, I can do that too. 
But that not that you can't, but to believe right. you can do it in yourself, that's your first mistake. So right. the way the way she was going through scripture, the way she was up and up and up and through the word, Jeremiah, Isaiah, I, I was like, Lord, this is refreshing. This is a refreshing surprise, you know, and it's a it's a beauty in the council. So and when she that. when she called them children with that accent, the accent yeah. just kicked it yeah. up a notch. It, it brought me back to the old days when you know, cause I'm from the uh, south. I don't hear it as much now, but old days. Right. Oh man, you can't look. They, they'll tell you off and sound good while doing it. <laughs> right, right, right. So not, <laughs> nothing to play with. Nothing to play with. Uh, right. So this is this brings me into the testimony I have in like fashion is allowing the the, the grace of God. God seeks. He searches those who can, who he can sow himself strong on behalf of. And then also those that know their God shall do great exploits. When we want admonishments from men and remove God out of the equation, if apostle was to say today, hey, I'm opening up TNT, well, first lady, rather, I'm opening up TNT for everyone. I have to think not what the woman of God said, but what will God reward me with if I am faithful over this little thing? Right. So I show up not big testimony if the big or small this is the foundation i'm not i'm not going to despise this small beginning speaking about my own life i expect to see greater in god and if i don't see it then i have to make myself available wherever he's moving and shaking so, so testimony i have uh, is a testimony upon a testimony okay it's about the power of god and and the compelling of 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 saints so to a month ago one of our, our i believe our second um uh, mighty men of valor meeting if you remember we in my house we lost power we lost power and as a result i had to go outside because i have these solar lights out there so that was the only place the whole block was uh in darkness and we were the only house that had light and to me it was a foreshadowing of who we really are as men and women of God, that even when the world sits in darkness, we have light. And it was literally that. And we're out. I'm, I got the speaker on loud and Elder Vernell asked me to pray when the service was done. And there's people drinking. There's people smoking. I heard it all. And all I did, I went and prayed. And I, Lord, I was, listen, I was preaching and praying at the same time. Lord, and if they need you, then Lord, convict them now. And you would hear people coughing in the background, suppressing their cough. You, people were partying next door. They, they, everybody got quiet. I was shocked, but I'm learning. It's the spirit taking over a yes, atmosphere. Yes. Come now, on, I, Bishop, I also say testified, that. I also testified about that in this public place I was in. Someone asked me for a word. I, I wasn't expecting it, but I listened to the Lord and I had to raise the decibel of my voice because it was a loud, boisterous place. But the moment I started speaking, it was personal, but then everybody got quiet. So I'm yelling now this person's personal business. I'm like, Lord, this is what is this? And it's, it's his spirit. It's his spirit taking over. It's dominion. It's dominion being taken even over natural conversation. So I sit in these places understanding not for anybody else except for the Lord. Now, now, within reason, primarily the Lord. Of course, there's everybody else uh, I take into consideration. So that men's meeting, I prayed. Mind you, no one else has power. And I gave a testimony about the Holy House that came on the neighborhood. You know, people stopped drinking apart. Music shut off. Everything. It was like God just froze time. So um, a week ago, the my next door neighbor, she's a, a church mother. I didn't know it at the time, but she's, you know, up in age. But I'm driving and I'm parking. I don't know her. I've never spoken to her except that night. She was asking me if the power was off because she saw I had lights. I told her, yes, the power is off my lights of solar. So she's just looking at me parking. But I'm from a place where you know if somebody's looking at you, either they have something to say or they want to do. They, you could just tell she was pulling on me and it was odd because I didn't know her. So if if I have her attention captivated, Lord, with it, what is this? But by the time I parked, she was gone. That was the first time. 
Second time I end up coming and we end up go coming into our house at the same time and she stopped me and she says, you know what, sir? I just loved when you were praying for the lights that night. <laughs> I was just, I'm like, <laughs> she, she thought I was praying for the power and she's just so enamored that I was praying for the lights. And then I was able and this is when I learned that she was a, a believer because I started talking to her about the Lord being good. And she had somebody with her that clearly had their hair red. They were they they clearly didn't believe in, in in the same God we believed in. So we're just talking. This lady's mad, and I'm talking to her about the goodness of the Lord. And then Bishop Sheba comes and says, "You know what? The lady next door was talking about you praying for the lights." Now that's a testimony about the work of God and the impact it had on this lady. And I I bless the Lord for that. That to me made my day my week even now to testify about that i had no idea i was just praying because other vanilla asked me to pray and i was outside but the lord will put people in your path to let you know this is the way this is the correct direction and when you listen to that you will see the fruit so many are missing the fruit in their life because yeah. they don't want to listen they want things to be exactly how they want. They want God to bless them exactly where they want and how, where I just say, Lord, anyhow, if you're going to do something in my life that I can't get credit for, guess what? I, it, we do it in business. In business, to say, learn how to fail fast. So failure is not the issue. You have to learn how to fail. And with the Lord, you have to learn him by experience. Failure isn't the correct. You, you learn your limitations and you learn his the the impossible things that he gives you he would do right. the impossible with you not for yes, you with you and in, in order for you to learn the with portion you got to stand up and walk on water you got to go and do that thing see so many allow fear to prohibit them and that's the difference i learned and the lord showed me with business and ministry i had an innate fear in ministry because of a lack of 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 confidence in the scripture i don't have that same fear now as a matter of fact i go into places where there's believers that are carnal i just give them scripture i give them scripture and i don't turn around i set the whole place on fire it doesn't matter because we have to have a standard if you like it or not it's necessary so that's my testimony today thank you for having me the lord was good this lady just believes i was praying for the lights and I, I just I love it. The, I love it. I, I appreciate the Lord and, and him allowing that, because guess what? Nobody could have came back with a testimony. Right. But I thank him for showing me the scripture. I thank him for putting me in position to go forward. Anyhow, fear, love, perfect love, cast out fear. If you're afraid of anything, you have to begin placing scripture contrary to that fear when the when the word god told joshua you're he's going to war not not public speaking going to war meaning he may not come back tomorrow right he may not be here he said listen do not be afraid store this word in your heart concentrate on it meditate on it day and night and there you will have prosperity but because we're not meditating on the word day and night we're not seeking god day and night we, we're, we're, we're fainting because of our, the lack of our connection and things in God. So that's all I have for now. We'll see what happens. But I just thank the Lord for that little testimony. Uh, one last thing. When you're faithful over the little things. Yes. For the little things. Yes. You you're ruler over much. So if in my assessment, I, what I saw was in, in Canada, there were thousands of people being changed life transformed now how would you get to that place if i never sat in this place now anything is possible with god anything is possible with god but what am i telling god lord i have this open opportunity just to look for your power and working through and with me and then i won't even take that opportunity but i want to be able to affect whole nations Right. How, how would I expect that? And and if I if God was to give me that opportunity, what would I do with it? Because I don't even have the basis. I don't have, don't even have the basics. So there are too many 
too many that are not understanding the position and the time that we're in disregarding the open portals of heaven it's an open portal for the hyper speeding up lord i'm i'm for the amount of the way the prophetic has changed in my life and it's not like the lord came and said hey this is it now no the work changed and the people are now coming and and now the lord i don't know <laughs> not that I knew before, but now, Lord, these, these people have real problems, Lord. And and now you have to trust in him. Not that you didn't before. The work was different. So let's not despise these small beginnings. If, if, if things are being opened up to you, don't consider your fear. Consider how much greater God is. Consider find the word, find scripture. Listen, Sister Barbara's always on here. She, she sings herself through to a place. And I'm like, Lord, I need to learn how to sing like that. That, or at least have the the boldness to just she'll she'll testify, sing, testify, sing, and before you know it, she didn't yeah. have her own church service by herself. Right, right. And, oh, I, and I have, <laughs> and I have. Trust me. <laughs> Amen. So that that's already I'm too. <laughs> our, our our church service by herself, we joined in on. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> She just goes for it. We have to catch her. We're like, you better jump in. So the department's down the road already. She done left, she left us. Everybody. Yeah, she it, everybody. It's kind of like when they drove off in the truck and you had to jump in the back in the hatch back there. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Barbara, leave you. We gotta be. We running down the road, jumping in the back of the hatch. You know, trying to catch her. Uh, we got a testimony, First Lady. From uh, yeah, we thank the Lord for your. We yeah. thank. Give me one second, First Lady. We mm -hmm. thank the Lord for your testimony, Bishop. And uh, so many critical things, principles were yeah. given in this testimony, and I'm so glad we're recording it because uh, you know sometimes we hear testimony and the wisdom of the Lord is dropping in the testimony, and <clears throat> one one issue with having itchy itching ears. Is you're always looking to hear something but you never grasp what you hear this is acts the 17th chapter said the stoics and the epicureans were always meeting in the marketplace to hear some new thing or to tell some new thing mm -hmm. but they were completely in ignorance when it came to the true and living god mm -hmm. and so the apostle paul opens up his message to him who you ignorantly worship he says, now I declare him unto you, you know, and so we can be, we can be right in the house of the Lord and be completely ignorant. I believe one of the biggest problems in the church today, why we have the reality of two churches is many people spent many years inside the parameters, but never really seeing and understanding King Jesus. So they have a form of godliness, but they have to deny the power thereof because they never entered it. And so all they can see is the parameters, but they can't see the man from Galilee within the parameters. This is how you end up being a Judas. Judas was in the parameters. He's in the bishopric. The scripture's clear on that. But he never could see King Jesus within the bishopric. And so it is today. There are many that that are that are in the parameters of your office or your administration and yet you still can't see king jesus this was nicodemus this was the entire sanhedrin so so many powerful things you were uh uh the holy ghost was really um ministering through you bishop and i don't want them to be lost on us because a lot of times we are a testimony we have come in testimony service is not about coming in here and hearing some new thing or telling some new thing. It's actually about coming in here and furthering the transformation of the Holy Ghost in you and in your life. And that's why you should not despise the day of small things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and small beginnings, because you come in here and you're testifying about something that seems small to you. Tomorrow you'll be testifying about, to, today you see I'm testifying about a molehill, tomorrow it'll be a mountain. Amen. And that's the way it works because you can't be trusted with a mountain till you can first not trip on the molehill. Okay, and it works this way not only with the blessings of the Lord, but the trials and tribulations, sometimes that are even fiery, show up and you're like, Lord, why me? 
that that's not the that, that's what you ask when you're less mature when you mature you know why you because i'd rather you put this on me than some new believer that can't handle it i'll take it for them because i can i can walk right through this fire with you and not even be burned i can go right through these these rivers and the waters won't overflow me i can go right through these waters and you'll be with me, Lord. But if you were to put this on a new believer, and here's the ask, somebody's got to go through it. The devil's raging. Somebody's going to have to meet him at the front line. And how dare us, who have been tried in the fire, and the, I, I remember uh, one, of, um, one of our bishops said, the Lord calls his most anointed to the hottest places. And so if he puts you in that fire, he calls you to that hot place like we're going in Charlotte. You have to know that he sends his most anointed to the hottest places. We have measured ourselves in the church by the wrong standard. Mm -hmm. We're measuring ourselves in the church by how blessed we are. But what type of blessings? I want to be blessed to where when the water shows up, I know the Lord's with me when the rivers show up. I already know I have power over them. They can't overtake me when the fire shows up. See, that's where I am. That's why when things show up, I don't panic. I'm not moved because the Lord is in me. He's anchored in me. King David said that I shall not be greatly moved, you see. And so, you know, I you there are so many powerful things the Holy Ghost said through you, Bishop, and I don't want it lost that we didn't come in here to hear some new thing or tell some new thing. We came in here and we're being transformed by these testimonies. We're being, as I'm listening to your testimony, is different than six months ago. Wow. It's different than six months ago. Six months ago, your issue was, how do I approach evangelizing at my job? How do I approach evangelizing the street? How do I do this? Six months later, and the testimonies are about how you did it and about how people are affected. We went from that in a short time, just a, a just maybe two or three weeks, to now they're being drawn to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been tracking. Man. I've been tracking. I'm listening intently. And so now we got folks being drawn to you. The man on your job, this lady here, who thought you were praying to the lights. <laughs> Sounds like some Taoism to me or some Shintoism, depending on which one you pick. Okay, well, so, but, for the lights. <laughs> yeah, you're praying for the lights. I don't know what the lights need prayer for, but whatever. Okay, <laughs> whatever she perceived was real to her doesn't mean it was real in real time. But anyway, she, but the point was, it had an effect on her. Mm -hmm. And it's so powerful when you said it, that the Holy Ghost, when, when you're speaking, when you're praying, atmosphere the atmosphere begins to shift it goes in the atmosphere it's something so highly underrated even in the body of christ you know we 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 go and preach you think you're preaching to the people the lord didn't send you to preach necessarily to the people the lord sent you to preach in the atmosphere and he will draw the people who need to be in the atmosphere because it's not he didn't draw them there for them to hear he drew them there for the possibility of transformation. Acceptation of the gospel rejection is really about transformation, either to light or further in the darkness. But you hear in order for this to take place. Oh, this is time. Preachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, preachers, you go there, you're thinking, I'm going to preach to the people. You've missed the Holy Ghost. Not sending you there to preach to the people. That's why I like to ask all the leaders who was out there with Ezekiel when the Lord said, commanded him to prophesy, because it's a valley of dry bones. He clearly told us. So who's he preaching to? Who's he prophesying to? You got a valley full of dry bones. Nobody else out there but him and the and the Godhead, the eternal Godhead. So who's so what is the point of him even being out there then? because he's speaking to an atmosphere. And by the way, he's speaking to an atmosphere so long and wide that it would take another 25, 35, no, about 2,500 years before his for, for that exceeding great army stood up on its feet. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking May 14, 1948, that prophecy comes to pass. So we're talking about a 2,500 year period. This man prophesies from his time and it reaches 2,500 years through the vista of time and comes to pass. We have to understand how powerful the word is in our mouth 
you're, you're like, oh, well, the prophet spoke, nothing happened. Um, depends on what time it's for. And you did not realize that you may be prophesying a word that won't come to pass for another thousand years. You won't even be alive when it comes to pass. Does not mean it won't come to pass. You know what that's to teach you? You know what you learn when you understand that? That your service is for the Lord. It's not, you can't be popular once you realize that. You, you lose, you get humble and you say, I might not even be here when this prophecy comes to pass. It humbles you. That's where true humility comes in. Because you recognize, I may not even be here to, in your mind, get the glory of what you're doing. You could be long dead. Ezekiel was long dead before that prophecy came to pass. The land lay barren for over 2,000 years before his prophecy came to pass. See, if we understood that, but when you're thinking about the people, you're the popularity preacher. When you start thinking about the Holy Ghost, you're, it, it will, it's a force humility because you know you might not even be alive when that word comes to pass. So you know there's another blessing in that. So when, unless there's a specific time you called out, and there could be a double fulfillment, just because it's fulfilled in one time, there could be a double fulfillment in the future on its way. Unless there's a specific time, people say, well, he prophesied that it didn't come to pass. But Ezekiel didn't give you a date when it was going to come to pass most of the apostle most of the prophets gave you no date for when their prophecies were going to come to pass but they did and we're reading them in scripture so you know what that does that's when you start getting this revelation it gets rid of the need of what man thinks about you you don't care because you know how this thing works the people criticize it most of the time almost 100 percent of the time they don't know how it works so they're going to criticize because they don't understand how the system works. So I bless the Lord for your testimony, Bishop. I've seen it change in a rapid time. We went from in the last six months, if we even made it that far, it's rapidly changed. And in the last two, three weeks, even it's changed by leaps and bounds because now the spirit of the Lord is drawing people to you. Thank you. Lord. It's drawing people to you, yeah, you that not by power nor by might, but by your spirit yeah. says it's one thing for you to go. But when the Lord, mm -hmm. the Lord says, you know what? I have a trust with you. I can start yeah. drawing people. Yeah. to you. Yes. I know yes. you will get yes. them me and not your crazy self. Yeah. yeah, I know you're hidden in the cross and in the blood. He's in here right now. That that thing hit me like lightning stretching from the east to the west. Oh. When the Lord can start drawing them to you. Okay. Your altar time is accepted yes, in heaven. Hallelujah. Come out in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Your your ministry is approved. The administration of the Holy yeah. Ghost is working yeah. in you. When the yeah. Lord can say, you know what? I have a trust with you. I, 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 you've shown me. You've shown me that you're willing to build a trust with me. You've earned this with me. And I'm going to start drawing those to you that are broken and hurt. Dr. Guthrie could, that Dr. Guthrie testified how the Lord beget, told him he was going to begin to draw fallen fruit to, to, to him. The Apostle Dr. Rhonda reminds me of Dr. Guthrie. She has a fallen fruit ministry. Those that have been trampled by life and run over and run up under all the wheels of the 18 wheeler on the back end of that trailer you know and and walked on by men and scattered to the four winds of the earth and dr gruffy the holy ghost revealed to him i'm going to start drawing all the hurt the lost and the broken in here even those in the church that have been dropped and damaged and mephibosheth and all the rest of this stuff and apostle dr Rhonda has a ministry so you know what the problem is we have not matured to understand that because we may be in the same administration doesn't mean the lord called me to the same aspect of that administration as you right. he called you the fallen fruit he right. called me to straighten the nations out pay attention before i judge you and my wrath right. falls on you and then we get to criticize not saying this is happening between me and apostle but i'm using us as an example but we have to be awfully careful of yes. criticism Mm -hmm. That's how, see, the body of Christ don't do this stuff. We're talking about the apostate church. If you're apostate, it's easy for you to look across the line and criticize. But when you got the Holy Ghost in you, it's impossible to do that. Oh, because geez. the Holy Ghost will choke down on you. The Holy Ghost will pull down on you. He will harness you. He will pull that bit in your mouth and say, watch it. 
because you're talking about my work now. All of you folks out here, it's so easy for you to just sin like that out of your mouth. It's so easy for you to sin in your actions. I know the Holy Ghost is not regulating you. It is hard and almost impossible in many stretches for you to sin. The Holy Ghost will start pulling that bit in your mouth. You start getting uncomfortable and in some pain. I remember telling the first lady this. She's like, oh, you know, and she didn't really have an understanding. It's okay because she was where she was. But I said to her, honey, when the Holy Ghost get in you and he put that harness on you and starts pulling that bit in your mouth and you start going in some pain, it starts getting uncomfortable. You'll realize you can't sin like that. You, The stuff you're talking about, baby, you can't sin like that when the Holy Ghost got a hold of you. Right. And in many rights, especially as you mature, it's impossible to sin like that. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. That's, and the scripture of Tessa says that, 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 that the children of the Lord who have his seed in them, it's impossible for us to sin. You know what it's saying there? Not that we can't commit one, but we can't commit one without confession and repentance. It is when a true believer sin, you are sideways out in the floor, messed up for weeks, Woo. months. You five years later and the Lord's forgiven you and your mind is still touched by that thing. It's still worn a little bit in your soul. And you got to go back to the altar and say, Lord, I know you forgave me, but touch me because I'm struggling with this thing today. Five years later, you're still messed up behind the thing. And it's crazy because you know the Holy Ghost forgave you when you boldly came before that throne to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in the time of need. You know he forgave you right there. But when you're a true believer, that thing will mess with you five years later. That thing is still touching you at times. And you're like, Lord, I know I asked you to forgive me. And I'm not asking you to forgive me again right now because I know you didn't do it. I'm asking you, I need a touch because this thing is still bothering me. That's how I know many people, we got a second church here. Because the way these people can sin and you could just do this stuff that y'all do and you do it so easy, no repentance, no confession, the devil is a lie and so are you. Anyway, um, First Lady Apostle Dr. Rhonda had a testimony. You want to hit us with that one? Yes, Apostle Dr. Rhonda says, let me see here. Here it is. Many years ago, I was struggling with addiction. I had two students come into my classroom today they saw oil on my desk. They asked me if I would lay hands on them, anoint them, and pray for them. Don't and you do it, Apostle. Right? Don't and you. Then I said, of course. Mm. In the front of my classroom, I laid hands on them and prayed for them both. Come on. They, they told me they will be back tomorrow with some more girls who want prayer. Well, it is what it is. Jesus. Uh, come on. Come on. Jesus. Oh my goodness. Come on. We've been putting that in the chat too, that the Lord's presence. Just come on. Yeah, so Amen. about these schools. Man. And it starts with the teachers and the, students come on. and the students and the students' parents. I love that. Come on. Yeah. Come on. So many. Yeah, I just did myself. That is powerful. Yeah, and, it uh, is. Yeah, it is. Ooh. Was there another one? She said the God, the schoolhouse would not be a high place where policy causes me to esteem the God of this world over my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus yeah. Christ is Lord. He absolutely Christ is. And I'm going to tell yeah. you something. That's again where we're talking about that drawing that 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 apostle could be at her job and the Lord begins to draw these young people and see. But it takes boldness. Yes. It takes boldness. See, they saw that oil yeah. on the desk. Yeah. And what I love is how do you yeah. know that's anointing oil? Right. Uh -huh. How do you know I ain't gonna cook chicken that night with that? How do you know uh -huh. that that's right. anointing oil? How do you know I wasn't I didn't bring that for my ashy ankles? How do you know <laughs> what that oil is for? See, that's what tells you the Holy Ghost is on the scene. Because yeah. how did they know what that oil was for? Yeah. Somebody told them. Somebody had to somebody somebody, somebody says somebody something yeah. that, that 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 uh that they knew what that oil was for. Yeah. That's that's what I love. Yeah. That's what I love. <laughs> But it's like that uh, Apostle Varel. He they he he getting them drawn to him. So now she's working with these kids. Now they're drawn to her for another reason. The real reason. That's it. Reason they Amen. need. Yes. That's it. So it's the same thing. Wow. Minister, that's yes. it. That's it, Sister Barbara. It's so it's so true. Minister yes. Latasha says since Antoine. She says, testimony, since Antoine got baptized in the Holy Ghost, we're still shouting off that. Yes, we're right. still shouting. Uh, Minister right. Latasha, I don't we think she was in here when I said this, so let me throw this on the floor. Minister Latasha, the day you sent that to us, I was agra 
aggregated and aggravated, okay? I was all the A's. I was aggravated. And I'm driving two and a half hours away, and I'm trying to calm my little spirit down. And ma'am, when you sent that testimony and that thing popped up on my screen because I was driving mm -hmm. and I read it, it was like all that oomph I had in me got sapped out. And it was like, I'm praying, Lord, <clears throat> you got to help me because I'm upset and I need to calm down. And I'm going to tell you, Minister Latasha, we got a double blessing out of that because he got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then when you told me about it, uh, I got filled again because I was <laughs> aggravated. Okay. <laughs> and so, and yes. so when that yes. came up on the yes. screen, that thing sat that right out of me and I began to praise the Lord. Yes. So I, 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 I said this to a few folks, but I, I couldn't remember if I said it while you were present with us. So I bless the Lord, uh, minister Latasha, uh, cause when you shared that with us, we were driving about two and a half hours away. And I was seriously aggravated, but, and I'm saying, Holy ghost, you got to help me calm down. Cause I'm driving. I don't want to get no accident. And, um, and I'm, and I, and, and that doesn't happen that often. It takes a lot. Um, <clears throat> but so, you know, I'm human. You get to that place sometimes, but I know to go to the Holy ghost and ask him to touch me. And while I was praying, your message came across the screen and that was his touch. As soon as I saw that thing, it was like immediate touch, immediate spirit filled touch. And I was changed and I just blessed the Lord. She said, since Antoine got baptized in the Holy Ghost, the climate in our house has completely changed. Our communication is clear and there's more understanding between us. God did that and I'm forever grateful for answered prayers. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, that's why we want everybody baptized in the Holy yes. Ghost. Yes. Before you get married. Now, if you somehow made it on the altar past that point, let's clean it up. But I'm going to tell you, this is why I, when it comes to premarital counseling, boot camp. Well, what's the number one thing this couple needs to know? You need the Holy Ghost. Jesus. Because, sir, ma'am, if you're trying to do this in your flesh, you're going to have some long, long, long days. Nights. I bless the Lord for this testimony because not only, see, wherever we are, oh, please hear me carefully in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, wherever we are, what we have ought to work. And I'm talking about the Holy Ghost in us. See, and when you're, your first ministry is your home and what you have doesn't work in your home, Right. You know what the preachers, you know, you remember Sister Barbara, what the old bishops used to tell us first. They said, your first ministry is your family. Now, when I look yes. at your, when they look at your spouse and your ministry don't work on your spouse, why yes. would I believe it would work for me? Well, you wouldn't. Okay. Yes. And I think if more people took that seriously, yes. I told so many young preachers that I'm looking at your spouse to see if your ministry works. I'm not looking at Jesus. you, your singing gift and your preaching gift and all this. I want to see if your family's touched by your ministry. Mm -hmm. I want to see if the Holy Ghost in you touch them. That's how I discovered the Holy Ghost ain't in many preachers. Because your family is shipwrecked. Okay? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost, your family members might, my, I got a lot of family members not saved, but i tell you what they are on the right side of this. Okay? In terms of respect. They don't want to serve my King Jesus yet, but, but they don't fool with him either, and they don't fool with me. They know where I stand, and they're like, you know what? I respect the lines, and that's what the scripture says, having your family in subjection, you bishops, with all gravity. It's not saying rule over them. It's not saying this kind of Gentilic, spiritual Gentilic abuse. It's not talking about that. It's talking about ordering your house after the Lord where everyone knows the expectation of the Lord is in the house. So no, you can't listen to secular music in my house. What you do when you leave it is on you. And I mean at 18. I don't mean before 18. Before 18, don't be listening to it because you're going to get out in the world because you're going to get tempted to do it here and get lit up. I'm going to have to hurt your little feelings and tell you. And my kids did. They went out there and they tried to bring their little, first it was Walkmans and they tried to bring their little MP3s up in there as they got older and all this stuff. And I said, you're not playing that in here. I would ask my kids, I walk in the room, you got something in here. What you listening to? I'd make them turn it up, pull that out and let me hear on the spot. Or I'd take the thing, let me hear. And they were honest. And sometimes they let me hear. It wasn't what I wanted here. I said, turn that off. You know that's not approved here. I told my kids, what you do when you leave my house, completely between you and the Lord. But while you're in it, 
the show runs my way because I want to make sure that I only have you for 18 years. I need to make sure there's a sure foundation in you. Scripture said, train up a child in the way they should go. When they're older, they won't depart. But what you do when you're older is on you and the Lord, not on me. But your formative years are on me. Come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. So I bless the Lord for that, Minister Latasha, that the household is being blessed. And it will be. You know why? Because you have to have the mediator. That's the issue. We get going in our own carnal thoughts. And, and sometimes it's just it's just your own way. You're not necessarily carnal. You're just thinking, hey, we should do it this way. They're thinking, hey, we should do it this way. Now, if you're not careful, you jump carnal, and then it gets it gets interesting. But when you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost can be a mediator. Say, you go to your corner, you come here with me, and you come here with me. You know, I love the Holy Ghost because he can tell you both to come to him at the same time, and you be in two separate rooms. That's what I love about him. He can tell you, he can talk to you while you're on your job, and I'm at home, and get us straightened out before that other one comes back home. That's why I love the Holy Ghost. I bless yeah. the Lord for that for that testimony, um, Minister Latasha. So it's such an excellent testimony on tonight. Um, Dr. Rhonda said, you young people are my inspiration, my hunger for the Lord is wide open. My body may not be as young as it used to be right with you, Doc. My mind may not be as young as it used to be right with you because I've noticed I'm, 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 sometimes I have to think a little bit harder. The, I have to put a little more un unction on the on the thought to, uh, to, to, <laughs> to remember some things um, so I could tell age is catching up with me a little bit. It's okay because we're going to do it gracefully. But God is and can still use me mightily. sure can. He sure can use us, and he will use us. And um, let me see. I'm going down the list. I don't want to miss anybody. Then we're going to release. We're going to cut Sister Barbara loose because she's going to take us in in, in, in service. And uh, we, uh, okay, everybody, get ready to, to run after that hatch because Sister Barbara going to leave us, all right? So, um, oh, I'm telling you, Dr. Rhonda, all over him. And, uh, oh, yeah, I'm telling you, so powerful. Apostle, that testimony. Yes. Yes. Uh, Sister Bar Bishop, Sister Barbara does look beautiful tonight. Yes. And I noticed many of you said that she sure does. And the glory of the Lord is shining through her so brightly. Uh, mm -hmm. Minister Latasha said, Divine setup, it certainly is. Yes. And uh, Bishop said, Thank you for being my. My front and rear guard, that's so, po that's so powerful, yes. so true. We need to understand that, especially when we're going. We're dealing with uh, many different things. Sister Armani's in with us. Sister Armani, you know, First Lady and I love you. We honor your presence in the TNT tonight. We thank the Lord for you and all the, the children. We bless the Lord for the entire family. And um, Apostle Dr. Rhonda is something that we really have to learn. She said, my God, we take that atmosphere for granted. We easily dismiss the power in the atmosphere. We absolutely do. And we really got to, uh, we really going to have to, um, mature in that area because there's so many blessings that I think that we are undercutting ourselves on because we're not we're not understanding how powerful it is um, for us to um, speak the thing the oracles of the Lord in the atmosphere uh, brother Robbie Manyaris we bless the Lord for you sir always excellent to have you in with us and we thank the Lord for you sir um, on tonight I'm just going here making sure I didn't miss anybody's testimonies um, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Pastor, Pastor DeVars, we just blessed the Lord for you, sir. You were supposed to call me back. Now I'm going to call you at 3 a.m. So, um, and then you're going to be mad because you like, so call me back, Pastor T. Uh, oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Apostle, I'm just going here. Pastor T, so excellent to see you. you know, we love you. And, uh, Pastor T and I were, uh, we're talking earlier and uh and uh he sure does apostle she said running when the holy ghost come through he sets order everywhere yeah. not just for church but he sets order in the home on the job everywhere it's so true and and that's that's what we really have to understand that when the holy ghost is in you when you really have the unction of law, it sh it should work anywhere you are it should not be limited to a time and a space as the holy ghost 
is not limited to time and space. I'm right with you, Apostle Shah. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And yeah. she said, when I visit your house, so true. Because yeah. if you visit mine and I visit, I, I, it's going to be prayer service. Uh, Sister Angelina Monique said, please pray for me. Yes, ma'am, we will. Sister Angelina, if you have any sp specific prayer requests, put them in as we're going to close yeah. um, in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. And uh, Bishop, we're going to ask you to close us out on tonight in prayer, if you don't mind, sir, because uh, that oil is flowing on Bishop. I still, that Canadian oil is still flowing. It came up again tonight. I don't know if anybody saw that in the realm of the spirit, but that Canadian oil is still flowing on the Bishop. So, Sister Angelina, we're going to lift you up before the Lord. So if you have any specific prayer requests, let's go ahead and put those in the chat. Uh, and anybody else, if the Lord's laid anybody in your ha heart that needs prayer, many of you have already put uh, many of our brothers and sisters um, in the chat, many prayer situations. Hey, let's load it up. Let's get them all in there. Bishop's going to pray us out with that fresh oil. And the Lord is answering prayer mightily. He's answering so mightily. And uh, and we thank the Lord for that. We've seen the dead raised. We've seen death uh, sentences canceled in the North American Watchman's Council. We've seen financial decisions reversed by the Spirit of the Lord. We've seen the Lord, be, as Bishop rightly concluded, be our rear, our fore and rear guard. And so the Lord's got us protected on every side. Uh, we're traveling safely to and fro at a time where people are losing their lives just here at Lackland Air Force Base. Our son is up here in the north, but down there in San Antonio, some would-be people, just random people, um, started firing on our sons and daughters there at Lackland Air Force Base. The security what? officers at the front gate just started shooting at them, you know, oh, and uh, without reason, without, they're, they're still investigating. They don't even know why. And uh, thankfully, nobody lost their life, but there were some injured. And so, um, but this is this is the world we live in now, that they could just, just open fire. And I praise the Lord because our son was actually, he was an MP. So if he was down there, he could have been on duty when Jesus. that happened with the Lord. But I spoke an oracle several years ago and I sent it to him. I, I wrote it out, I texted it to him. And I said, the Lord is calling you. And I started talking about World War III. This is before anybody mentioned it. And I said, hey, you need to come out of the position you're in. And in due time, the Lord moved him out. So he's no longer in that position. Uh, because he could have been right on that firing line. But I praise the Lord. Wow. The Lord was faithful. And I gave him an oracle. And I said, World War III is coming. You need to move out of that position. And you need to move over into this position. And the Lord did it. Saints, we need to see ahead of time. I cannot stress this enough. Some of you are so aggravated. And you're like, you know, I'm just about sick of you, Apostle. You're always talking about Boa. Listen to me carefully. If we don't have foreknowledge, what do you think is going to happen? We're going to run smack. It's not going anywhere because we go stick our head in the sand. This stuff is coming. Your Bible is telling you it's coming. The only difference is the Holy Ghost is now showing us we have opened prophetic portions on the timeline that were not previously open. Saints, the Lord's word cannot return void. Us sticking our head in the sand is not going to stop it. We're either going to accept. So what do we need then? The Lord is saying you're not appointed to wrath. Yay. So now we know we're not appointed to wrath by the scriptures. So what are we appointed to do? To tell others about him who may be appointed to wrath. And that's our job. So we don't have to worry about being clipped out of here. What we need to do is start getting to work knowing that we have the protection in the hand of the Lord. That's what we need to start, start doing. Not a belly aching about, oh, this is coming. We are not going to stop the word of the Lord. It won't return void. We've opened up this Matthew 24 portion of scripture. It is darkness has come upon the earth, growth darkness to people. What people? The wicked, not the body of Christ. Our job is to help them come out of that darkness into the marvelous light. And if we understand that, we won't spend our time being concerned. We're not appointed to wrath, saints. You shouldn't be concerned about anything on the prophetic timeline. What we should be concerned about is understanding it so we can intelligently give it to our family members and say, hey, do you know this is coming? So before there was any talk about a World War III, I told my son, it's coming. So when you start to hear X, Y, Z, he was stationed in Qatar at the time. He had just come back. He was out there six months. And I said, hey, when you see this, we're there. And he started to, and as we started to see it, his, his superiors moved him to another MOS out of harm's way. And the Lord was faithful to the oracle he gave me. Saints, this is what powering the altar is about. How are you going to help your family members if you don't see what's coming? 
if we don't see. And let me say, well, you know, Apostle, I can't quite just see. That's why we're walking together. That's why us gathering is so powerful. So the watchman can say, here's what the Lord showed me. Here's what we're seeing. And then you can say, and then we can say, hey, now here's what we need to do about it. Right. And if you look at this right now, the Lord's not telling us, go get water and food and this, that he will provide. The Lord's tell his primary thing he's been saying to us for almost five years now is tell your family members about my son so they don't perish without him or they don't perish at all. It just depends. OK, and that's the thing he's been speaking to us. We got all these rogue prophets running around to mouth. You need water and stock up on this and stock up on that. Can I ask you a question? Stocking up all that tissue, did it help you during COVID? No. You just bought a bunch of tissue. And then you know what I saw a bunch of fools doing? All these idiots went back in there. Now they're selling it. And then they upped the price. So now they're selling. And then we had ads talking about, we, we got COVID tissue for sale. I'm sorry, what's the difference between regular tissue and COVID tissue? I mean, it was just, it was just nonsense, Bishop. First Lady, Sister Barbara. So you know what the issue is? That's not, listen, if a nuclear weapon was to burst in the atmosphere, radiation poisoning will infiltrate everything in your house, everything in you, every, your water won't be drinkable, your food won't be drink. So them prophesying that to you is because they don't really see. And no one has considered this. You can stock up on all that stuff you want. And if it gets contaminated, you can drink that water, it will kill you. You will literally be drinking death into yourself. And don't give me this stuff about, well, you know, the Lord said we could take up any deadly thing and drink it. If you don't know what the Lord told you to do in the first place, I doubt you have faith, that kind of faith, to sit down and eat your chicken sandwich full of radiation and trust that it's not going to kill you. Okay? Your prop, the, all these world prophets, stop listening to all these apostate prophets. You have true prophets in the earth whose word is time-tested by the Holy Ghost. All right. We need to understand this. Sister Barbara, you got the floor. I, I got through everybody. I got all the testimonies. Yes. I didn't want to miss anybody. What you got for us, Sister Barbara? And you know what? I'm in the back of the truck now, so you can't take off and leave me tonight. <laughs> I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do. I'll do what you want me to do. Yes to you will. Yes to you will. Lord, if you sin. I'll go. Just send me. I'll go. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll, I'll, go do, I'll do what you want me to do. Oh, I'll do yes it, Lord. Yes, to your will. And yes, to your way. Yes, Lord. Lord, if you send, I'll go. Now, I, I, my story. my story is like, I wanted to tell this because this is talking about the beginning when I first found the difference between living in a miserable life and going to church. So I wanted to do that. Like um, the first thing I said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So as I, as I was reading, as I'm studying the work for the, the empowerment and listening to all this that's been going on for the past couple of weeks, and the only thing that comes to mind is, why don't people want God? Why is it so? Why do we have to force God? When my mom, okay, when my the first time I went to church with my mom, um, I was in an abusive. I was at the end of a nine year abusive relationship. Something that I didn't even tell my mother because I thought she wanted me to be with him. So I fake like I love him. But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is, is the title's called He's Jealous. Okay. So the point of the story is my mother took me to church. And I just left a miserable house where I'm always depressed and everything. But I went into this church and all I see is happy people. They singing, clapping. And I mean, the first song I was singing her was melody, melodies from heaven, melodies from heaven. You know the oh, Kirk yeah, Franklin oh, doing, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm listening to all this, and I'm looking at all these people that is happy. And then my mother took me home, and that happiness went away right away. Mm -hmm. So when she went again, I said, "Mommy, I want to go." So I had him got out the house, and I went with her to the happy place. That's what I called him when I was. Knew it. I wasn't even a Christian yet. I was just just enjoying the ambiance in that church. 
In other words, I end up going back, going back. Because I had I wanted what they was having. I was wanting what they were serving. I needed to have it. So I had to stick around to figure out what it is because I want it. And I Come sat on, in the bro, front bro. row. Do you understand yes, what I'm saying? I sat in the front row waiting for something. And then all of a sudden, um, I get back home because I still there for a moment. I get back home. Oh, you going to church for somebody else. I said, you're right. I am. I'm going to church with Jesus. <laughs> right, right. Come on, Sister Barbara. Jesus is like it. somebody else. So I kept right. Going. He tried. I mean, he just kept abusing me. So one night, this is where it get a little scary. One night, I just got tired. My brother had that. You remember the Rambo knife that they had that like, loosen up um um, Rambo had it. Anyway, I had my brother had. It. I said, "Can I hold that?" So I put it in my um bed and I waited till I thought he was asleep. He must have knew something was wrong because just as I was gonna stab him, he caught my hand. That's when I packed my daughters up and I left the house. Somebody told me how to get to court to get him away from me permanently. That nine years of abuse was over. This didn't happen until I learned how to live differently in that church. So I'm still going into this church. I want, I want this. How do I get this happiness? And I just stayed around. And oh my God. Then all of a sudden, things just started happening that I know that couldn't happen because I was believing what I was hearing. I was believing. The reason why I stick around you guys is because what I believe, what I started to believe, and what God was giving me, you guys are feeding me the saint that I drink some water. <laughs> you guys are feeding me the same thing that I was um that I the same thing that I was looking for, you guys. You put it all together because you understand God's purpose. And that, as I keep um, listening to y'all, and then Rhonda started her thing, and I was like, oh, my God, this is this is what I needed. Mm -hmm. So, on, uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm getting myself back into the church mode, and I, I there's a song that this choir sung called I Am What God Designed Me To Be. And I was like, what did God design us to be? And I'm like, I am what God designed me to be. Do you know how deep that statement is? I'm not what you want me to be. I'm not what you say I should be. I am what God designed me to be. Mm. Come on, Sister Barbara. So all the things that I was told since I was little, all the bad things, no, that's a lie. Because God designed me to be this pretty girl who's a proud of who she is. I'm proud. And as I continue to grow and then I get in under Rhonda, oh my God, once I got under Rhonda and Tony and their ministry, and now, we, man, look, oh my goodness. I got so much to say, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to control myself, but I got so much to say because it's just so much that God showed me since I started going to Mount Pleasant and I learned how to live outside of an abusive relationship. Once God took me out of that one, thank God, but I didn't learn about relationships yet because I got into another one. But again, God delivered me out of that one. In uh, 2000, 2001, in 2001, he delivered me again out of that one. And now what I had to do before I met my current husband was I had to take care of me. And I said, God, what do I need to do to take care of me? And so I started, I date myself. I took myself out on a date. I took myself on, on Valentine's Day. I bought myself candies. and You know what I'm saying? I took care of Barbara. So the next person that come into Barbara's life, you got to know two things. First, you got to know God and you got to understand who God is. And then you got to treat me better than I treat myself. He gave me everything that I asked for in my current husband. You guys don't see him much because he works two jobs. He, he's getting off work in about 25 minutes. You know what I'm saying? But 
I, I just wanted to say that because I wanted to talk about how when I first started going to church and recognize that there's something that I'm missing at home. And then I had to change that. Once I changed that, my girls was happy. And because they was miserable as I didn't re recognize how miserable they was like I was until I got them out of the situation and away from their father. And things started getting better than I had my last daughter. And she, I took them to church with me every time we went to Cry rehearsal with Rhonda and them. I always took them to church with me. And one day, she at nine years old, my youngest daughter, she's 36 now, but my youngest daughter, she started this rap group at uh, age nine. And the one thing that she had them do before they went on stage to perform is they had to pray. And then she said, and then she told me how, remember the song that you guys used to sing when we went to, to Salvation Army? And the song is called Faith is the Substance of Things Hold For, Evidence of Things Not Seen. My daughter have it on her arm right now, Faith and Hebrews 11 and 1. My other, my oldest daughter, who's now 41, she puts scriptures on a wall or wherever, she, wherever her and the kids is, she puts script, um, scriptures around the wall. Now, let me tell you why she does that. There was a drive-by shooting. And where the kids normally sit to play the game, the TV did not work. And the TV did not work is because the bullets came in the house mm. and it hit her ceiling. And I was like, oh my God. So if they would have been playing that music, they would have hit. Oh my goodness. So she, she has a little bit of faith. I want her to have a stronger faith, but I'm working on that. But I'm not, no, I'm allowing God to work on it. I'm not working on anything. I'm allowing God to work on that. And I just wanted to say thank you guys for the counsel. Thank you, Rhonda, for introducing me to the real, the real, real learning of God. The, the real way of living with God, the real way of God taking my soul and my vessel, his this his temple, and using it the way he wants to. Now, I, when I was growing up, I always thought I did everything right. I didn't curse. I didn't swear. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't do anything else until I read the Bible and said fornication. I didn't know what that was, so. When I figured that out, I said, ooh, ooh, God, I'm making you mad. Oh, my God. So I stopped that right away because I did not want God to be mad about what I'm doing to his temple. I stopped abusing this, his body. Yeah, I said his body. I stopped abusing his body so that he can use me in ways that I would never be able to think about. Like, I'll give you one example. I went to the doctor's. And just as me and this lady was getting on the elevator, I had earphones on and I was singing what I thought was low. And it was actually Christian music I was listening to. And I was singing. And when we got off the elevator, the woman came up to me. She asked me, what are you singing? And I think it was Order My Steps. I love that song. So I think it was Order My Steps. So then she was started explaining to me how what she was told, just told by the doctors, um, she was really upset about it and the diagnosis she had i had for years so i was like oh it'll be okay it's not gonna be that hard and then next thing you know all i remember is thank you thank you this is the best medicine in other words god took over my body and gave her whatever she needed and she was thanking me thank you you gave me the best medicine they could ever give me i don't know what god said but i just let him use my his vessel not my vessel his vessel. And that's what I'm learning to how to stay focused, how to stay our marriage. Y'all talked about marriage and the communication. Oh my God. Um, Latasha is going to get better because me and my husband went through, the, went through all that. We got 15 years coming in and we went through all that. And I'm telling you, our communication is great. He doesn't disturb me when I'm in Bible study because he's working anyway, but he usually calls me 50 times. But when I say I'm in Bible study, he doesn't disturb me. 
And I'm telling you, I stay praying over this house. I always anoint this house and him so nothing comes in. I do all that because I don't want nothing coming in our house, in my body, his body. So I always anoint this house, anoint this bed, anoint my husband. And I just say, God, just continue to watch over us. And that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to just dive in. But I still say, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do, I'll do what you want me to do. Yes to you will, yes to you will. Lord, if you send, I'll go, go, I'll go. Will you want me to go? I'll do what you want me to do. I'll do it, Lord. I'll say, just speak the word and I'll tell it. I'll go. Uh oh. Rhonda, you remember that song? That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done, y'all. Old James Fortune in there while Sister Barbara was singing, you know. I love it, Sister Barbara. That needs to be our prayer. I'll go, Lord. Send me, I'll go. You tell me to say, I'll say it. You tell me where to go, I'll that, go. It. Yes. All right. All right. I love it, Sister Barbara. And Apostle Dr. Rhonda said, I'm so proud of what God is doing in, doing with and through you. All of us are, Sister Barbara, is so excellent to, to see what the Lord is, um, how marvelously he's working in your life. And uh, so we, uh, I'm telling you, Evangelist Lakeithia, yes to your will and yes to your way, Lord. Yes to your will, the old saints used to say, I will obey. And so we just bless the Lord on tonight. Jesus. And um, uh, so uh, we thank the Lord, Sister Barbara. I did want to ask one pertinent question. Okay. Um, you did get rid of that Rambo knife, right? Because uh, if I come to have oh, yeah, dinner... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to get lit up. No, no, I sit, no. That was know, back when my, with Sister Barbara. That I'm was thirty six years ago. About the because of my youngest daughter wasn't even <laughs> Sister Barbara. I'm I'm joking, Sister Barbara. I'm I thought I was about the statute of limitations when she she started with that story. I'm like, wait a minute. When you start telling that story, Sister Barbara, I was like, I said, Oh Lord, Blue, let us get. We gonna have to cut this off, or we witness a one eight. Wait, wait, I'm a paralegal, we, so we still, I, we're privy to a one eighty seven. End up testifying. <laughs> I, no. I'm a paralegal, so I know all about the statutory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm messing, Sister Barbara. I knew you got rid of that thing. It, it was just funny the way you said it was like this big Rambo night because we all remember that night. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I hope she got rid of that Joker. <laughs> no, I'm horsing. I knew you. I, I knew it was a long time ago. I just, uh, it, 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 I, sometimes you hear something, you can't pass it up. You know, yeah. I could, Pass that one up. Um, so uh, let's look at Apostle Dr. Rhonda. She said, I don't like the fact that she's got me crying like a little punk. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Minister Latasha, I bless the Lord. Uh, she said, I love these testimonies. We honor God. We sure do. Bless the Lord on tonight. All right. We got Gangsta Rabbi with us tonight. Usually we have <laughs> Rabbi Shalom. We got Gangsta Rabbi tonight, and he looked like he about to go over there gang banging on, uh, I don't know, he's got Sienna on, so I'm assuming it's going to be, uh, what's the other, you of Albany over there, I guess they getting ready to go, they going to run something. So Rabbi, Gangsta Rabbi, what you have for us tonight, sir? Yeah. Yeah, Gangster Raboni is Bishop V was <laughs> come up here with the hood on. I'm like, okay, that's what we're doing now in the pulpit. Uh, hey, you know, gotta love it. Got look, I'm so crazy. He almost got me ready to drink this coffee, but ain't no coffee in the cup. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to pour some coffee. I'm listening, Elder. We're in the office, so uh, you got the floor, sir. So before I be give my testimony. I just want to say shalom, shalom, shalom. All the saints, all the leaders, all the saints at Northern American Washington's Council, I bless the Lord for each and every one of you. I give honor and glory to God, my Heavenly Father, my Lord and Savior Yeshua, and the precious gift of Holy Spirit that lives and dwells inside of me. I just want to say something. I'm going to share my testimony, but as Sister Barbara was testifying, Holy Spirit dropped something in my spirit. 
Uh, uh, we've heard through Holy Spirit that joy, the definition of joy is an undeniable revelation of who he is. And that the and as Sister Barbara was testifying, Holy Spirit pointed out that this is what joy looks like. This is this is somebody that you know has an undeniable revelation of who the Lord is in their life. And so I bless the Lord for the joy of the Lord that Sister Barbara has. And I uh, and I just love it. I just love your your energy, your your vigor. Just the love that you have for the Lord, you can you can tell that she has the undeniable revelation of who the Lord is, and He just impressed it upon me as she was testifying. And, and I had your back, Sister Barbara, as well, because you talked about getting ready to stab your husband. I put allegedly in the chat, so I had your back. Allegedly, right? Allegedly. Words are critical. Words are critical. Allegedly, yeah, you know. I'm right. surprised. I'm surprised you didn't type that in, Mister Mr., uh, Mister Lawyer. I'm surprised, Apostle, you didn't you didn't jump in before nope. me. Nope, Sister Barbara had me at that Rambo knife. I was I was done at that point. I was arrested out in the backyard on my way to the sale. That knife had me. When she talked about that Rambo knife and the way she described it, I was done right there. So you yeah. say both of us. <laughs> Listen, when she said it, I was like, I started cracking up because the vi you know I'm a visual person, so the visual of that knife, yep, <laughs> in my mind. But uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving it at that point. And come on, you know where all the babies that saw that movie. So, you know, yes. that's why she knew to describe it that way, because she knew it was going to hit us. Indeed. And I'm sitting there thinking, look at Brother Robbie put a knife in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's Brother funny? Brother Robbie, I can't even, I can't even, I listen, we're, we're a bad influence in that way. Everybody comes in here and just start cutting loose. Right. See what we done? We done, boy. We create a riot everywhere we go. We we folks come in, they jump right in. I love it. I Listen, love it. The funny thing is, though, I bless the Lord for Brother Robbie because I seriously, when I put allegedly in the chat, I was about to put the emoji. I was about to edit the comment and put the knife emoji in front of it. So he did it for me. So I bless the Lord for you, Brother Robbie. But even that knife in the emoji is not big enough. It's right. <laughs> But I, but I blessed the Lord. I was done at that Rambo night. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. I was not prepared. She went. She went from over here. She went from the mountaintop <laughs> to the gutter, and then back to the mountaintop. I don't know how and, she did and, it. and swerved while doing it. Yeah, yes, just, she did. Just threw us all out yes. left field. <laughs> yes, and I was here for all of it. I blessed the Lord for it. Uh Say, oh, and you know, you know where that influence came from. That came from Apostle Dr. Ron. Yeah, you that came from the gu she needs to repent. That's the gully, that's the gully apostle right there. That's her influence. The gully apostle. That's, that's the it. Gully apostle apostle, that apostle, that apostle right gully of exactly. all people. Apostle she gully. About, I'm her. the same one of all people. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Try it, try it, try it some other time, Apostle Gully, because of yeah. all people you were <laughs> we we can't. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. When you we, get to work tomorrow, another day. when you get to work tomorrow, grab that anointing oil, and and as Yeshua said, physician, heal thyself. I need you to anoint yourself when you get to the office on tomorrow. Because I'm this telling you, because Barbara's testimony with that Rambo knife, that was all your influence. That was all you. Yes, I'm telling you. Night and every night, bless the Lord. But I love the saints. I bless the Lord for each and every one of you all. Uh, as as Bishop B was talking about, you know, being available, really being available and, and trusting the power of God, I was cracking up to myself because that's literally my testimony from this past Sunday. So let me, for those of you that do not know, let me give you the preamble uh, to the Sunday morning worship gathering <laughs> that took place this past Sunday. So one of my prayers that I've been praying uh, to myself, so to speak, but also honestly to God is to allow him to use me in a greater capacity. And I had that in the back of my mind this Sunday. So I get it. I bless the Lord for Lady Jen and her faithfulness. I want to say that again. Lady Jen does a lot that you all don't see. And and so I, I'm, I'm going to keep highlighting her um, because it's important for us to honor all the saints and in the church, especially the apostate church. We have a bad habit of honoring the saints that are seen, but not honoring the yes. saints that aren't seen. So true. And and, behind, and and the ones that are seen are, are not able to do what they do if it weren't for the ones behind the scenes that aren't seen. 
And so I, I give honor to those, and especially being someone that has suffered from being overlooked and underappreciated in service to the Lord, I always want to make sure I honor those that are not, that I may not be seen uh, as often, but their work is no less valuable to the kingdom of God. So I honor you, First Lady, and, uh, and everything that you do for the North American Washington's Council, Cox Church of Dallas, Texas, the Main House of Restoration, Washington, Washington Community Church of Pakistan. God was blessed, Apostle. We know Apostle, uh, you know, is on his face praying for us regularly. But Lady Jen does a lot as well that she does not seek or ask credit for. And I want to highlight and honor uh, her for that. Let me stay focused because somebody over here trying to cop, please, please, cop and plead, trying to plead the fifth. Yeah, she's trying to plead the fifth. This, this is how guilty people sound. This is what happens in the court of law. When you're guilty, this is the sort of stuff that comes out of your mouth. You know, you know on Facebook, um, Gangster Rabbi, how every week, if you sow stars, they'll tell you it's like the third week you've done this mm -hmm. or you've been, you're a top fan or, you know, so Apostle Gully, this is the second week she's thrown me under the bus. Last week, Bishop was investigating and got to the bottom of something. And she said, oh, I'm glad you see the real culprit now. And it was me. She threw me under the bus. So she gets a second top um, bus roller this week for throwing me under the bus again for the second week in a row. So we just bless the Lord for Apostle Gully and uh, for throwing me under the bus again. So we and then had the nerve to say, Oh, this is what we're doing up in here tonight. Oh, yeah, obviously, if you're throwing me under the bus for a second straight week. <laughs> I love Apostle Dr. Rhonda, I, I so do. love her. Yes, and we um, yes, we do. Yeah, she, she threw me up under there. Uh, 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 gangster rabbi. So you gotta, Bishop. When you close out in prayer, you gotta, you gotta pray for us. You gotta pray for us. Yes, please do. So, so this Sunday, uh, I get, a, I get a message from First Lady. Mm -hmm. Apostle is resting. Now, the moment she said that, in my, in my head, I'm like, okay, I know where this is going, <laughs> but I'm not gonna ask. I'm just gonna wait and see how this plays out. So, this is like. This she asks, can you open up service for us? And the funny thing is, can, it started with open up service, and then it, it turned out to me actually running the whole service. <laughs> but it was, can you open up service for us? And then it turned into, well, apostles resting, can you just go ahead and, and administer? But the funny thing is that, that when Lady Jen asked me if I could open up service, I literally could hear her voice, her her sweet, not not the Detroit voice, but the sweet, <laughs> the, the sweet voice, and her asking so I was like, I can't tell. You know, I can't tell Holy Spirit and I can't tell Lady Jen no. So I said, sure. So the first thing is, and, and I, I'm only saying this to share a testimony. I'm not laying blame or guilt on anybody. So what did I do? I called, I, I started, to, I hit up the bishops to see if they could serve with me. But I, they reminded me that, that you know, that they were serving uh, evangelist uh, Tiana and weren't going to be available. I was like, cool. I, I hit up uh, evangelist Keithia. And uh, she wasn't available as well. And so now I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to literally do this service by myself. And I started to make, I started to, for a split second, think of an excuse <laughs> to back out of not serving. And you and I both know uh, how that ended. <laughs> so... <laughs> I know it was a thought for only a split second. It was a thought like the Rambo knife. It was only a thought for a split <laughs> second. And oh. then I let go. And so I was about to make all these excuses, but the reality is I said, well, Lord, I don't like, I didn't wake up prepared to minister. I, I was not, I wasn't, I was not, I was not prepared, but then I, I pause and I'm like, okay, so so what are we going to what are we going to do to, to give to the people? And that's when Holy Ghost reminded me of the the vision that he gave me Sunday morning and also the scripture in uh, Philippians 3 and 10 about uh wanting to wanting to know the Lord in the fellowship of his sufferings. And that stayed with me from the vision that the Lord gave me about, you know, suffering um, for, for evangelizing in a foreign country to spread the gospel. And so I was like, well, this is what I have. This is what, 
the Lord, the Lord wants me to share. And then I shared it, but it took me a minute to come to the realization that one be so my, I realized something in that moment that my, that my brother, Bishop Vero, Bishop Sheba, my sister, Evangelist Keithia, that all of the leaders in the North American Watchmen's Council have been my errand to some degree. In a sense of, you know, I, I don't I don't speak well. Well, your I'm gonna send your brother Aaron. You're gonna be as God to him. You're gonna put the words in his in his mouth and he'll speak for you. And that was me on this past Sunday. But it was it was really a test to see if I'm gonna trust what Holy Ghost gave me, or am I trusting in others to to give and, and to and to show up with me before I uh, minister what the Lord has given me to share with the people. And so I did not, when I woke up that morning, have anything planned. I did not know I was going to be ministering on Sunday. But also I knew that if I didn't minister, the saints wouldn't get a word. And somebody wouldn't re wouldn't receive the, the word that the Lord had put in my spirit. Now, mind you, it when I got it, it was just for me in my mind. I had no intention of uh, of even sharing that dream uh because it was very personal to me but in ministry you have to you have to be willing to be exposed and you have to be willing to give of yourself just like christ gave of yourself gave of, of himself you know he gave a, of himself for us he came to this earth he died in our place he offered up his body in the place of ours and put all of our sins upon himself on the cross. And so it was really, and I'll be honest, it was, even though the vision for me was kind of scary because I don't, unlike apostle, you know, he says, you know, you can, uh, I'm not the one that says, don't shoot the message. You can do what you want with me. As long as you get the message, I ain't there yet. <laughs> so I'm not going to sit here and pretend <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I that I want to die anytime soon, <clears throat> nor do I want somebody to test me because it might be me uh, that's sitting in prison and this this uh, green hoodie might be orange or blue, whatever the prison color is. Um, but the thing is, for me, I have to be willing to accept that. And Apostle always says you have to be ready for martyrdom. But to be honest, as a believer, I've never I've never prepared myself for martyrdom because in america there's let me let's be honest in america i have a greater chance of dying for being black than i do of being a believer and so far and yes thank you yeah so far yes in so the, far yes so far now will that always be the same no but but growing up in my 40 years of existence i was concerned about my perception, people's perception of my skin color than I, than I, that was of my faith. And so I never thought about martyrdom because for me, when I thought about dying, it was, a, it was more or less at the hands of, of police or a wayward bullet, you know what I mean? Then, you know, me dying for the faith. So I never really contemplated that until I came to, until I really came to North American Watchmen's Council. And so um, seeing, you know, getting this vision of, you know, of me potentially, you know, me dying, you know, dying before my, my time was something that I have seen on a, I don't want to say it on a regular basis, but it's something that the Lord has been highlighting more and more. And I don't believe it's like a, a foreshadowing or a promise <laughs> at that time necessarily going to pass away, but I believe exactly to Apostle's point. It's about understanding that to, when you when you're truly living this life, you have to prepare, especially for the times that we're going into now. You, we have to be prepared to be martyred for our faith. And if if and when the time comes, are, are we willing to suffer? Are we truly willing to die? In the name of Yeshua, for the name of Yeshua, for the gospel message. And that's something that I truthfully had never really contemplated until that vision last Sunday. And it's something that the Lord is, uh, is dealing with me on in terms of, of fear. And in the scripture, the scripture is clear. It says that those that seek to gain their life 
will lose it. But those that are willing to lose their life Come on, elder. for the gospel for my sake will gain it. And Come I believe on. that part of the reason why, because one of my prayers has been, Lord, why am I not as effective in evangelism, in um in you know, sharing the gospel, spreading the gospel to strangers. And it's and it's because of that passage of scripture. There's still a part of me that's trying to hold on to my life. And, and the thing is, I don't even know what the my life is, honestly. I don't know. I, I can't pinpoint exactly what the thing is that I'm trying to hold on to, but there is something that I have been fighting uh, that needs to die in order for Christ to truly be resurrected in me and to truly and truly see and experience and demonstrate the power of Christ um, as our Lord and Savior did when he walked this earth. Um, in, in the three and a half years of his um, or third three and a half years of his life, but especially three and a half years after he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost without measure. And so for me, it was really this walk has been. And it's not and we're not even being persecuted. That's the that's the the sad thing about it. We're not facing any real persecution yet. So there shouldn't be any real apprehension. But there is some I'm, I've been praying because there's something in me that has been hindering Holy Ghost from from fully using me to to his uh, to the fullness of, of of the of the measure in which he desires to, and I believe that last Sunday was a, was part of this journey that I'm on to 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 die honestly. Um, and let me clarify for folks that might look at me and be concerned. I mean die to myself. I don't mean suicidal. Just to be clear, uh, I love myself too much to die, and I know my that my work is not done. So don't call no no one eight hundred numbers for me. Uh, I am not taking my own life. Um, I, I do have some professional knives here, but they're not the Rambo knife. So uh, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, uh, Lord willing. <laughs> but no, but in all seriousness, there, there's a part. This has been a journey for me that the Holy Spirit's really been dealing with me on. It, it's about he's been telling me for quite some time that there, that I still have more dying to do. And I know I still have more dying to do. But the knowing and the doing... <clears throat> Or let me say it this way: the knowing and the yielding. It's the, the 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 gap between knowing what you need to do, and allowing Holy Ghost to 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 do it, or or doing it so that Holy Ghost can do what He wants to do in you. That is the that is the part that is that needs to to close rapidly. But I'm I'm fighting it for whatever reason. Because there, there are some days where I'm on fire for the Lord, I'm evangelizing, I'm sharing the gospel, and there's other days I don't really bother with people at all. And it obviously should not be that way. And so this is something that I've been praying about, um, not just for myself, but for others as well that truly want to be used by the Lord. But there, there's a difference between having a desire and then being willing to make the sacrifice. And, that, and ultimately for every believer, that is the, tr that is the, the place that we need to get to. We need to we need to get to the place where we move beyond simply having the desire or the want to do to do a thing, and the, and fully yielding and submitting and surrendering to Holy Ghost so that He can do it through us. And I know for myself, part of the problem is that when I evangelize and miss, so to speak, I know Apostle said about praying and miss earlier. When I evangelize and miss, I know it's because of one reason. It's because I'm thinking of myself. In that moment and what do i need to do and holy spirit give me a word the focus is not on just simply listening and and, and hearing uh, hearing holy spirit to get the words to get the strategies apostle dr ronda um excuse me apostle gully has been uh has been sharing with us in the <laughs> kingdom bible study classes it's not about it hasn't been getting the strategy it's i'm here and there's a and there's an anxiousness that I have. And I believe in, in that anxiousness, the Bible says be anxious for nothing. But in that, in that anxiousness, it's hard to hear because you're so you're trying to almost force the will of God uh, and force Holy Spirit to use you in a moment, as opposed to simply uh, yielding and listening for his voice and then doing what it is that he commands and he might not command you to do anything in the moment but you can't hear if you if you're focused on your own anxiousness and you're and you're putting your own desire to want to evangelize above holy spirit's desire to use you 
And so for those of you that are struggling, and it could be it's, it could be nervousness, it can be fear, apprehension, all these things. But really what it comes down to is, is unbelief. And that's the substratum of, as an apostle has taught before. What it really comes down to is unbelief. And I realized something, and this is the conviction of Holy Spirit. And I'm, I'm sharing this with you because I, I pray it helps somebody. Because one, one of the questions that I asked Holy Spirit was, why is it that I want to be used, but then in the moment, I shrink back or I think about my own limitations and why, and I think about, uh, you know, being perfect and saying the right thing and, and being and basically performing as Apostle mentioned earlier. And how is it that I believe in the power of Holy Ghost? But I struggle to allow him to operate fully through me and Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit told me, he's like, he told me that the truth of the matter is you think. Excuse me, he, he said that. Believing you, you believe in the power of Holy Ghost, but you also at the same time question whether or not Holy Ghost can Holy Ghost's power can be demonstrated through you. And in, in, and if you believe that, if you question whether or not Holy Ghost's power can be demonstrated through you, then you're actually not doubting yourself, which is what you thought you were doing. You're actually doubting me. See, I doubted myself and my own ability to be used. What Holy Spirit told me. And taught me, rightly so, that to doubt and deny, to doubt the the, the power of Holy Spirit to be demonstrated, <clears throat> to doubt Holy Spirit Himself. And so that is the area that many, that myself and I'm sure many others are wrestling with. We do have to understand that it is not us that does the work. It's not us that does the minister, the ministering. It's Holy Spirit that operates through us. My so, Lord. so the problem. So I used to say, Holy Spirit, help me to get out of my own way. But now my prayer is, Holy Spirit, help me to get out of your way. Because the reality is I'm getting in the way of Holy Spirit using me the way I state or claim that I want him to use me. And there are other reasons as well that I won't really get into. Much of it is dealing with uh, fame. And you talked to you touched on this earlier, Apostle, because you and I both know the fame of the fame of Yeshua spread everywhere once he started performing his miracles. They right. got in boats, went the, and crossed seas because they thought he was in a place, realized he wasn't there, got back in the boat and crossed over the sea again to the place where he was at. So they found him. <laughs> and people do that here for people, and we do that here in America for folks that don't that aren't even demonstrating the power of the Lord. <laughs> Come on, sir. And so, for, honestly, for me, I love people, but people are draining, and I don't mean that in a in a negative sense in terms of you know the, in terms of uh, like they're leeches. What I mean is that in serving people, it takes a lot out of you, <clears throat> and that's the one thing I always think about when you when you live a life of service. It takes a lot out of you to serve. And I understand that. And so when a, when Lady Jen contacts me and says, hey, Apostle is resting, I know what that means. I know what that means. And I always joke, Psalms 23, he making me lie down beside the still waters. That's Apostle. Sometimes you had you had to be made to lay down. But I also understand that if if the Lord does it, then it's required. And, and so when the Lord gives him rest, I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, you can't use me today, Lord, because truthfully, he's given me a apostle to look at. And so if I'm, if I look at his life and see how much the Lord pours out uh, of him and how much he is emptied out and then refilled, how can I, who doesn't serve nearly at the capacity in which he does, Say to the Lord, you can't use me when he need when, when my number is called. You know, this is this is the humility, you know, that that I have and understand. And so it's a blessing to be used. And the one thing I appreciate about Sunday 
is that once I, I was nervous as I always am before I started ministering. But what I loved about Sunday is that because I had nothing prepared, I couldn't trust me at all. Mm, come on, Elder, at all. I couldn't, I couldn't put, I couldn't put any, I had no notes. All I had was, all I had was a vision and a scripture. And as, and as he, and as, um, as the Lord told uh, Moses, what do you have in your hand? Mm, come on. All you need is what's in your hand. What's in your hand. Yes. Now, and for me, it was what was in my heart. I had a, I had a vision and I had a word. And that was enough to be used. And part of the problem is that if we're honest, we think we overestimate what the Lord needs from us to be used. And so because we don't meet, we don't think we meet the capacity or the threshold of what we think we need to be ready and, and, and to be used. We then turn say, well, I'm not ready or I can't be used because I don't have X, Y, and Z. But the reality is, is that if you're, if you're willing to say yes, if you're willing to say, if you're, if you say yes before, before time, this is why Holy Spirit gave me the blueprint. You have to obey first in your heart yes. before anything else. You have to obey in your heart first. Well, then, you, then you have to sacrifice the power of the altar to get what? To get the revelation, which is the third thing that you need. And then you got to you have to then obey the exact commandment that you're given. And then you will see the transformation. And do I get this right every single time? No, I do not. But I believe the Lord also gave me that blueprint because he knows that I'm the one that, that needs it. I have to remember that that yes, the, the submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. That's not a one-time thing. That's a daily thing. The, 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 the scripture says that to pick up your cross daily. And there are, times, there are many times where I fall short. And there are many times where I get aggravated and angry at myself. Because I'm tired of being in this place that I'm in right now. But the thing is, is that you can't, you cannot give up. Because many of us struggle with being used and ministering and being, being effectual for the kingdom. And we start to focus on where we're falling short, <coughs> how we are sitting, the mistakes that we are making. And that should actually be our focus. Because if you focus on those things, you will end up waxing cold or waxing gross because you think it's you think the work of the Lord is up to you. The one thing that Holy Spirit reminded me today. Uh, in prayer, and I bless the Lord for Miss Latasha and, and, and her closing prayer in, kingdom, in the kingdom Bible study, because there are some things that she prayed that ministered to me as I was praying uh, you know, for my praying myself um, here in my own uh, home. So I bless the Lord for you and your ministry, and it is expanding. For me, there I had to realize that we we often we often think that we don't have what we need, and if you continue to focus on you and what you don't need, you will end up waxing gross and eventually waxing cold. Because you will you will trust in yourself and your own ability to minister, as opposed to trusting in Holy Spirit and His ability to minister through you. And so, the challenge for me and my encouragement for us all is: if you're in a place where you're not as effectual as you would like to be, do not do not allow discouragement to lead to resentment and bitterness, and eventually cause you to walk away from the faith. Or to become lukewarm. You have to remember, as Apostle always says, Holy Spirit does the heavy lifting. Mm. The times I am successful in ministry, and I'm a, and I'm when I say I, I mean Holy Ghost through me. Let me be clear when I say I. The times that let me just rephrase it so that people understand. The times that Holy Ghost is effectual through me is when I'm is when I'm able to, to not think about my shortcomings. Not think about what I don't have or, or what I or, or you know, what I lack, and just focus on Holy Spirit and he, and what He wants me to say. 
and I just say what and say what he says and leave it at that. And that's that's when I'm able um, to be successful. It's the times where I, I start thinking about myself first and what I don't have first. And this earnest, eager desire to evangelize more and put and put my desire to be effectual above what the assignment or the or the orders are, um, the files, as Apostle likes to say, that's when I end up falling short. And so understand that the the the, the beginning, middle, and end, the Alpha and Omega, is all in it's all in God, it's all in Holy Spirit, it's all in Christ, it's not in us. And I'm sharing this because uh, thank you, Evangelist Keith, because I was I almost forgot to bless the Lord for your uh, for your ministry last night. And I'm glad you just put that comment in the chat. So I'm going to do it before I close real quickly. We're about to go to North Carolina. And I don't I, I love people, but I don't necessarily like talking to strangers. But guess what? We're, we're going to North Carolina. I don't know nobody there. I know two people, but I'm not going to see them. So we're going to be in the streets evangelizing. So. Whatever my whatever this the thing is that's that I'm allowing to hinder Holy Spirit's work in me needs to die. And it needs to die quickly because we're going into North Carolina and the Lord is is ex I'm expecting the Lord to use me mightily. I'm expecting the Lord to use everyone that's coming mightily. And so whatever it is, and I'm expecting the Lord to do greater things through me. Not so I can boast to myself so that he can get all the glory. So I have to, whatever this thing is has to die. So my encouragement for us is, is if you're struggling in a particular area and you in your in your walk, in your marriage, in your ministry, whatever it is, don't magnify whatever that issue is. Put it on the altar, leave it on the altar, and and, and trust the Holy Ghost to work and partner in you. Until he gives you victory in that area, because he, if you remain faithful to prayer, to commune with Holy Ghost, commune with the Father, commune with uh, our Lord and Savior Yeshua, if you continue to to uh, to lay yourself on that altar and die to yourself, eventually Holy Spirit is going to give you the victory. Now, last thing I want to say, but definitely uh, not least, evangelist the Kethia. First of all, I'm so glad that you send out. The, uh, the message to let us know that you were coming live. It, even though it, it wasn't a short notice, short notice for me is like 20 minutes. I had three hours. So I was more than enough notice for me. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I, I put it in the chat. Like, I, I don't know why I thought it was 5 30. Some over here, I'm on Evangelist Keithia's Facebook page. I'm refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. She ain't, she's not live yet. And then I went back and looked. Oh, yeah. It's eight thirty, not five thirty. Genius, you still got you still got more time. <laughs> Be patient. But I just want to say, I was so blessed last night uh, by your ministry, and I didn't know what to expect. But once you once you started off and let Holy Ghost speak through you, let me tell you, the Apostle loves to say, if you didn't know Holy Ghost is is in this room, your Holy Ghost is broke. Now I don't like saying that, but I just want to use it because he says it, and it was apropos for last night. Because it because everyone that was in that service knows that the Holy Ghost spoke <coughs> last night. So the one thing I'm gonna share when you were ministering, you remember you remember the, the Homer Simpson meme when he was shrinking back into the trees? <laughs> right. That was me <laughs> last night on this couch. I was I was sitting still, but my spirit was trying to sink back. Into the couch and Holy, <laughs> Holy Ghost is preaching through Vance to keep you. Let me tell you, when she was ministering last night, the only thing I could think about was she was like a Holy Ghost filled mama. Like I really felt like she was speaking to me the entire time. I, and I was, you know, how mothers know how to lecture you to speak directly to your spirit, no matter how big and tough you think you are. That was the best keep you last night. I I felt like a punk in the spirit. Like I was sitting here on my couch, like, oh Lord. <laughs> but I bless the Lord for it. I am so honored that you allowed us to be uh, to be uh, in a, to not in, not be in attendance, but to be present. And you know, Apostle has been highlighting the, the events. You know how to teach. 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 So I'm seeing, as as Bishop B rightly stated, 
you know, the hyper speeding up in ministry. And I bless the Lord for, for your ministry. I bless the Lord for you coming live last night. I know many people were blessed by it. I bless the Lord for the entire Lockwood tribe because they showed up deep last night. And I loved yeah. the fellowship. And of course, you know, we show up deep. But that's what we do anyway. Um, but I bless the Lord for the Lord using you as you mighty, mighty last night. And I bless the Lord for this too, because you didn't allow quote unquote mistakes to hinder what the Lord wanted to say through you. And that's one of the key things about ministry. We are not perfect. So it's rare that we're going to get everything right. But <clears throat> the fact that even if, even when you made mistakes, you recovered quickly and you kept pressing forward and you, and you did uh, you fulfilled the assignment the Holy Spirit gave you. So I bless the Lord for it. But now, uh, as as uh, as the prophet Uncle Ben said from Spider Man, with with great power comes great responsibility. So now that we have seen Holy Ghost speak and move through you, now we we's expecting uh -huh. to see more of you in the future, ma'am. Yeah. On this good old IPBS, on this good old PRT, whenever other. Uh, time that the Lord can use you. So uh, we we we's best not be waiting three, four, five more months to hear another word from the Lord from you. <laughs> and I say that in all seriousness. Don't spit up your coffee, Apostle. But bless the Lord for you and your good accent. Uh, I just I that I was so blessed last night. And I want to say this last thing, then I'm gonna shut up and Bishop V can, can pray us on out. Uh for those of you that are newer believers, you are you are seeing the, the maturation in leadership before your very eyes. There is nothing unique or special about any one of us. And I don't say that, I don't say to put any, any of us down. Those of us that are leaders understand what I'm what I'm saying. Many people, the mistake that many folks that many folks make in the body of Christ, even and especially the apostate church, is that <clears throat> people want you to believe that there's something extra special about them, and it's not in you to 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 keep you bound to them, you know, to keep you bound to these pastors, these preachers, and people that have names. But the reality is, Holy Ghost has created each of us uniquely. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made. We were all created in the image and likeness of God. So, so the Lord has a special gift and purpose for each and every one of us. The goal is to not be like me or anybody else. The goal is for Holy Spirit to use you, yes. to use the gift in you, to use the anointing on your life. Because as Bishop Noel Jones used to always say, if you try to mimic somebody else, then you're robbing the world of you. The world doesn't need another me. Y'all know I'm crazy. One of me is enough. The world doesn't need another me. The world needs you. The, the, Lord, the world needs what, what's in you, what the Lord has put in you, what the Lord is trying to draw out of you. So don't focus on, you know, whether or not, oh, I, I can't do such and such like this person. I can't do this like this person. You haven't started yet. So you don't know where the Lord is going to take you. And you don't know how the Lord is going to use you. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't even honestly compare yourself to yourself. I, I share with somebody, uh, I, won't, I won't specify what it, um, who it was, but the one thing you have to learn in ministry, and hopefully it's to bless somebody, you have an audience of one. Holy Spirit gave me this and it stayed with me. You have an audience of one. The only person that you have to worry about ministering to Really, it's, you have an audience of three technically, but the three are one. Let me say it like that. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The three that bear witness in heaven. Those are the only, those are the only three that you have to worry about pleasing. Because every ministry is about one thing and one thing only. Doing what the Holy Spirit told you to do. That's it. As long as the, my only question after I minister is, Lord, did I do what you told me to do? That's all. That's the only thing you need to be concerned about because once we, we're all going to stand before the judgment seat, we're all going to stand before the beam seat, and there's only going to be one person that we're standing in front of, and that's our Lord and Savior Yeshua. And he's going to, and he, and he's going to, you know, give us, he's going to give us an account for everything done in this body, and then prayerfully we'll, we'll hear, "Well done, my good and faithful servant." 
So if we're only, if we're only going to stand before one who is our head, our Lord and Savior Yeshua, when, when our last breath is taken on this earth, focus on standing before that one here on this earth as you are ministering. The only person you need to worry about pleasing is not even yourself. Is, is the Lord pleased with my service? That's all you need to concern yourself with. And, and let that stay with you for the remainder of your ministry. So that way you don't get caught up in the praise of men. Because what Holy Ghost revealed to me in scripture, and I'll remind this, I'll leave you with this reminder. The Jews laid down palm branches on Palm Sunday and yelled out and, and, and cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, as Yeshua rode in on the, on the donkey into Jerusalem. And a week later, they released a murderer whose name means son of the father, who was guilty of murder and should have been on that cross and released him and said, crucify Yeshua instead. So in one week, the same folks that yelled Hosanna, that cried out Hosanna, Hosanna, cried even louder, crucify him. So for all of you that haven't gotten their ministry yet, for all of you that have ministries that haven't yet reached the heights that, that they're going to reach, remember that. The same folks that praise you one day will, will try to crucify you the next. So that's why you don't put any faith or any trust in the praise of man. Focus on the audience of, of one and making sure that the Lord is pleased with your service because that's the only person that you need to stand, you're going to stand before uh, when your life here on this earth is all is, uh, is over and done with. So I just wanted to share that. I, I bless all for each and every one of you. And I, I thank you for, for your gifts. I thank you for the gift that you are. I thank you for the gifts that are being, uh, that are being exposed, that are being uh, given to the body of Christ and given to those that, that need the gospel and continue to, to do the work of the kingdom. And uh, we are here with you and we're here to support you and we love you with that. Shalom. Have a blessed evening. Ella, we praise the Lord for your testimony and we thank the Lord for the wisdom yes. of the Lord that he so generously uh, dispenses through you. And uh, I bless the Lord for Evangelist Lakeithia because First Lady and I had an opportunity to hear her teach before, but here is the difference when she was preaching last night. Um, she was in a whole nother dimension and, um, this, the confidence and the, and I love what she said when I told the Lord, yes, it's a process. First lady was behind the scenes. And one thing about many people behind the scenes, they want to be there. And sometimes when you're, when the Lord is calling them forward, it takes those that have a faith and patience to help them do that. First Lady wanted to be behind the scenes, but the Holy Ghost was calling for something different. And so the Lord's, so I, I dispensed the oracles. Then uh, Prophetess Michelle uh, met First Lady and she dispensed the same identical oracles to see her come all this way. And it's the same thing with Evander Sakithia to see the Lord bring his daughters all this way to what we're seeing now, I, I don't want that to be lost on us because this didn't happen in a vacuum. It also didn't happen overnight. So, so to see both of them operate, and Havana Sakithia last night had an opportunity <clears throat> to hear her mother preach. And when I was listening to her, it was like I was listening to her mother. That same fire, that same bolt, her mother preach holiness or hell. It's, it's in Evangelist Lakeithia. But the issue is sometimes we go through some things and, and, and we take some losses and it takes some recovery time. And, it, and the Holy Ghost understands this. He has to have men and women of God in the earth to understand this. This is why... All of us leaders, as we're working with people in the future, you have to have faith, but you also have to have patience. People are going through things. You have to give them time. And can I tell you, sometimes they're not going to say the best thing and do the best thing when it even comes to you. This is why we can't take things personal. You know, when you talk about, I, I don't like people. Oh, we can completely understand that. But ministry is people. So there's going to be a transformation. There's going to be a dying to the flesh in that area.
because ministry is people and they're not cookie cutter and they're not packaged neatly and they come with baggage in. And I remember, so did I, and somebody had to help me unpack the bags and help me come to the place that I am uh, right now. And uh, and so <clears throat> when I'm working with end of it, I keep that in mind. You remember where the Lord brought you from and remember Pastor John Davis and, and Pastor Michael Smith and who was a minister at the time and Minister Terry Nettles and all of these preachers the Lord used and Pastor Streeter. Um, and all these individuals that the Lord used to help me develop in the process as the Holy Ghost was leading me to see her last night and to and immediately her mother's preaching came to me and her mother was so powerful when this lady preached it was thunder and and it was like looking at her but hearing her and her mother simultaneously one of her one of her i think it was her sister or maybe her aunt that mentioned that you remind me of mama you remind me of your mother okay and i i had that same as i was a, she preached powerfully and can i say this i don't care how long you preach you're going to make mistakes in the pulpit what i bless the lord for her is she didn't freeze on him she handled them with grace the holy ghost will give you grace mm -hmm. you know sometimes you're reading and she, you know she got out there walking on the water and she said hey i forgot the verse i was on because a fire of the holy ghost will move in you like that but with poison grace she just said give me a second she looked caught her place and kept us going and so i don't care how long you've been preaching there will be mistakes in the pulpit they're less and less and less the more you handle the word but they'll always be there they 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 will be far few in between after a while but even after 31 years of handling the word there's still some times you mix your words up you juxtapose something you forget the exact chapter <laughs> on something because you might have handled 200 scriptures that week you know and so now your mind your, your personal mind is in a space where you and the holy ghost were but you're in the pulpit now and that's not the scripture he's working on right now but you threw it up there then you there are ways to correct all of this and i was sharing with some of the younger leaders that if you're waiting on to get everything perfect and that's what i bless the lord for it's not waiting to get everything perfect because it's like get it and the holy ghost will uh, deal with you in real time and he'll work the kinks out but if you're waiting till it's perfect you're never going to get you're never going to get fruit you're never going to get it done she thundered the holy ghost was thundering through her it was powerful but i'll tell you another powerful aspect for my <clears throat> um vantage point is how many people that normally don't hear us that were there that hurt her every one of us is so powerful that you do what the lord has called all of us to do that we do it because the old preachers used to tell us there will be people you reach that i will never meet and there will be people i reach that you may never meet many we may if we work together we'll reach them all together but there's many we may you may go in a place and reach people I may go in a place we may never be in that same space at the same time and so I, I bless I bless the Lord um, for that uh, for how powerfully he used evangelists and I agree with you elder she's got she's and, and I say this with all confidence she'll step up to the plate because the Holy Ghost is calling her the Holy Ghost is leading her and the pulpits are open the Holy Ghost we have to know one thing we have to know when we're in prayer is when the time comes that you're no longer waiting on the holy ghost he's waiting on you we have to get an acute discernment to know when you've talked far enough with him that now the expectation is in your court it's time for you to move now i empowered you i transformed you i sped you up i gave you my word evangelist sakithia knows the word but the issue is there comes a time that you you can know the word and not have the case file for today you could be preaching a word that was for 10 years ago in modernity right now and that word's not for right now you have to have you have to have a download from heaven of fresh work you need fresh files what is the holy ghost saying today not sunday not last sunday not two sundays ago not 10 sundays ago not 10 Wednesdays ago. What is he saying right now? And we and there, and the fruit. Uh, you know why the Lord Jesus cursed the fig tree? Because wherever the presence of the Lord is, there should be growth. 
there should be immediate response when the Holy Ghost, that's why I, I've been saying that for the longest time, Elder, but your Holy Ghost is broke. If the Holy Ghost, you come into his presence or him into your presence, you two are occupying the same space at the same time. There is no way that your tree isn't bearing fruit. Something is off here and it's never the Holy Ghost. So we start with the correct principle. When there is a problem, it's never, uh, it's never the Holy Ghost. It's always us immediately we should bear fruit. Jesus cursed the fig tree. The fig tree was out of season. The point was the creator of all life came into the presence of this tree. He said, if they hold their peace, these stones would, the key is not that they would cry out. The key was one word, immediately, immediately they would cry out. And here comes the fig tree and gave no fruit bearing and no pray the fruit bearing is praise mm -hmm. when king jesus touches a thing it goes from nature to super you say well how could the tree bear because king jesus presence brings the supernatural the tree should have bore fruit right there but you know what that cursed tree was representative of it was representative of several things one was israel that's how they could hosanna one day and curse him the next right? A cursed fig tree. The fig tree represents Israel. It also represents Judas Iscariot. You're in the presence of the king, but you don't bear fruit. How? Immediately. I, I want to caution us tonight because so many people, they're like, oh, you know, I'm just not there yet. I'm not, it's one thing to not be there because you haven't been transformed by the Holy Ghost. It's another thing because you're digging your heels in. And you need to know which one is which, because one is dangerous. The other one is acceptable because it's in real time as you, as in your maturation process. But there are too many telling the Lord, you know, I'm just not ready yet. If the Holy Ghost is in you and he's called you, you're ready. Step up and the Holy Ghost will take care of the rest because he told us, take no thought. It'll be given you. I was sharing with Bishop V earlier. I was testifying how many years ago I, I, I began to, uh, as Apostle Paul, we were discussing some theology, theology there. And I said, you know, I said, when I first went into the street, I asked the Holy Ghost, what do I say to them when I go? And the Holy Ghost brought to my remembrance uh, an experience I had with Pastor Streeter, Streeter in the beginning days and he sat down on a park bench and he and he started to quote John. He started to read John 3.16 to me, but I grew up in the church, so I knew it. So I ended up quoting it. And he said, you know this? And I said, oh, yeah. I, and, you know, and I started to tell him when I and the Lord brought that into my remembrance. I started evangelizing in the streets of America with John 3.16. Later on, short while later, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Then then the Holy Ghost, uh, Pastor John Davis taught us Acts 2 and 38 took us through the second chapter of Acts, taught us about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then the Holy Ghost added Acts 2 and 38. 31 years later, guess what I'm still giving people? John 3, 16 and Acts 2 and 38. It's the key scriptures for evangelizing. And then I shared with Bishop, hey, I tell it to him. I quote it to him. I'll even open the Bible and let him read it. And a lot of times I'll read it to him. And I'll ask them, did you know this was in here? Have you encountered King Jesus? And, <clears throat> and so all these years later, it's still John 3, 16, Acts 2 and 38, by the leading of the Holy Ghost. So we need to understand this. If the, I'm so thankful because the Lord is calling evangelists, Akethia. The Lord is calling many of you to take the next step. That's Oracle's not going anywhere. Some of you are like, I know it's me, but there is no but. If it's you, it's you. The question is, we need to help you process to the next step. There are many of you, the Holy Ghost has highlighted you. He, br he brought you before me and he said, it's time for them to take the next step. Now, I'm going to be reaching out to all those where the Holy Ghost has said that. And it's up to you what, what you're going to answer the Holy Ghost. But I'm coming down your street shortly here. You're on the radar. And I want to say this. I want to say this too. I want to say this too to Elder Vanell's earlier point is the Sundays when I'm resting, it, is, it a, <clears throat> is it a force rest? Sure. But I want to be clear why the Holy Ghost does this. There are Sundays the Holy Ghost has me in prayer all night, many Sundays. And I will come out of prayer. You all are asleep. I'm up praying. And I will come out of that. And the Lord will empower me to preach the Sunday service to you. There are some Sundays I come out of there though, and he will not empower me to do it. 
okay? So we're not talking about apostle was up all night or got up or didn't feel like it or this, that, and the other, which clearly is not the suggestion here. I, but this is why I'm saying this, because here's what's critical. Sometimes you don't know what the Holy Ghost is doing behind the scenes. What this actually became, became is the Lord telling one servant, you're not carrying the baton today. Pass it to your brother. Pass it to your sister. I'm commanding it. You are going here and he is going there. And I'm going to tell you why this is so critical. This is another testimony I have tonight. Years ago, there was a man of God, and I'm not going to use any names, in a very well-known church, okay? And a prophet out of Ohio came and told the pastor, there is a man of God who's leading the Sunday school, but he's not the one the Holy Ghost wants there. So it is stifling, was his word, the Sunday school class. It, the Lord has much fruit for it to bear. So we'd come to Sunday school class, you had a strong five to ten. Now, I'm going to be honest, and I give credit to where credit was due. We have five or ten strong disciples every Sunday. So these weren't wishy-washy folks. I was one of them. Okay, so we got those sitting in there were about their business. But when the man of God said that, and I started to receive an unction from the Holy Ghost that it was me. This is why the Holy Ghost is so important so critically important and critically important that we can hear him and see what he's doing. So the man of God came out of Ohio. He was invited by the pastor. He had never been to the church before. He comes and before he ministers the word, he says, there is a man in this house that is supposed to be there. And when you place him there, he's talking to the back. These are real prophets. See, I don't, these prophets today are, they're apostate. This prophet, real prophets, will set the pastor's house in order. And real pastors will allow it and even expect it ahead of time. That's what they're calling the prophets there for. We've lost this in the old, and uh, we've lost this in the modern church, but it's being restored in the North American Watchman's Council. This is why the Lord's calling us to the altar until you can see and hear in this manner. And the Holy Ghost can say, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I've called them to. We're rising to that occasion. We're rising to that place of maturity. So the Holy Ghost, so the man of God says this, the woman of God, she goes, the pastor goes and prays. And the Holy Ghost shows her me. The Holy Ghost places me in there. Now, he's told the prophet, he's told the pastor, and he's told me in, in our separate prayer closets. Hey, so now I know you need to be ready, sir, because they're coming for you. Pastor comes down, removes uh, this gentleman, puts me there. And the thing burst forth. Now there are several hundred people, including uh, the fivefold administration, along with the bishops and the deacons, sitting in this Sunday school class. And it bore much fruit as the prophet showed the pastor. This is why it's so critical for us to work together. I'm saying this now because we get in this habit I'm the man. No, you're not. You're a part of a body. This is where we talk about true humility. Apostle Dr. Ronda, we were all together. We were talk, she was talking to us about true humility. That's true humility. To understand you're a part of the body. You're not the showstopper. You're not the number one stunner, as they used to say, in the streets. That's none of us. The Holy Ghost said, you have been with me all night. You go here, and the baton's being passed to him. And First Lady, rightly, is the leg saying, hey... I got it from him, and I'm giving it to you. Now run on to see, as the old saints used to say, what the end is going to be. Come on, anybody know the old church? They used to say that and sing that all the time. So we, need, I'm telling you, Sister Shandy is real. Is real. You know, we done got saved now, but we still got folks thinking that's them. All right, so we need to understand that. So the baton is being passed. Now, I want us to understand this because you get many people, and this is especially true of young pastors, that you have to preach all the time, that you have to be. So you know what it is when you're in that stage? You still have something to prove. I don't. The Holy Ghost can tell me, you go lay down, pass that baton, and I praise the first, and I praise the Lord for the first lady because you know what it is? I'm not even saying nothing to her, but there was a time I did. But now she has matured to the point where it's simply, you go lay down, I'll take care of it. And she does. Okay? 
Now, some of you don't realize the Holy Ghost is talking to you right now about your future, but you will. Because I'm going to tell you where we came from. We came from, unfortunately, a time in the church where the older men of God did not place anybody and work with anybody to take their place when the Lord called them home. And this destroyed, and through many ministries and the confusion, when them old men of God went home to be with the Lord. Yes, they went home, but the church was in disarray at that point. There was some confusion. I remember there were churches where the police had to be called and the first lady had to be removed. We had this happen in Detroit twice. Okay, and, and there were other churches where there was this all kind of confusion between the elders committee, the deacons committee, the pastor's son, other elders that were there. We can't leave the church in this condition. So I said to the Lord, Father, bless me that we're not going to leave the church in this condition. Many of you are being groomed and transformed by the Holy Ghost to take a bunch of steps that's going to lead you to a destiny he called you to many years from now, some less, so I, make sure you're paying attention because some of you got a few years, some of you got less than that, okay? And the Lord is leading us to this place, and it's incumbent upon the older generation. I'm right with Apostle Dr. Rhonda, and I shared the oracles with you. The Holy Ghost told me, I will do two things. Uh, he, he said, you, I'm going to send my young uh, sons and daughters to you, and you're going to work with them. It's conditional. Now, here's what's going to happen. If you take this assignment on, okay, and, he, and so this is the love of the Father, but he's not commanding me to this. But then you have to understand the heart of your father. Sometimes when he's not commanding, that's not the time to get loose and say, oh, you know, this is a free for all. No, it's not. Because sometimes the lack of command is a test for you to see if you're going to remain obedient. He'll remove the command. Now, first of all, let's correct this. And we're going to correct this many times because I still hear people saying this, not scriptural, it's not theological. God never asks man to do anything. He's not, he's a king. He doesn't ask. He's telling you. He's commanding you. The proper way to speak is God gave me to do this. He's not asking anything. So God gave, God commanded, God told me, come on in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Nowhere in scripture is the Lord asking anything. Even when that, that it's a poetic measure in scripture is used, okay, it's used most of the time satirically. It's like the Lord saying, should I do this? Or you believe this is the way we should you should respond to me, or this is the way you should act in a relationship. It's satirical. It's actually a warning of judgment. So let's please understand this. Kings don't ask you to do anything. Okay, we need to understand that. Okay, so what that lack of command is not, oh, we got a free for all. That lack of command is a test a lot of times to see if you're still gonna obey even without that, that command. So the Lord said to me, this is conditional, son. I'm going to send everybody in your generation, if they will work with the younger generations and raise my younger servants up, I will do two things for you. You will never want for anything, and the baby amongst you will be 100 years old. So it is a, it is a uh, work with promise, a conditional work with the promise. Apostle Dr. Rhonda took it up. I took it up. There have been many that haven't and many that have, and we're two that have taken this up. It is no mystery that all the generate that many of those being drawn in here are younger than me. And the ones that are not, we're all in a position to serve the younger ones. That's, that's not by accident. The Holy Ghost prophesied that ahead of time. Okay. So we need to understand this. So those of you, when, when I'm being placed Listen to my words carefully by the Holy Ghost. When I'm being placed in another position, it's to allow you to come forward. You need the time. You need transformation time on the altar, and then you need time to exercise the gift in you so you learn to handle it properly. And some of you may not realize it yet. You're handling more than one gift here. You're handling more than one work here for the Lord. You're handling several, several things. You just don't realize it right now because he hasn't opened up a wider context here. But trust me when I tell you by the Holy Ghost is coming. Some of you are future pastors and don't know it yet. Future apostles and don't know it yet. And, and you don't have one specific work. The Lord, when I tell people I, in the realm of the spirit, I have files on my desk, not one. 
I don't, I don't remember the last time I had one from heaven on my desk. I have files, work every day that the Holy Ghost is commanding. It's prayer, it's preaching, it's teaching, it's counseling, it's reaching, it's intercession. Many days my work, I go through the Holy Ghost brings person after person after person after person after person, and there's hours of prayer going on, on intercession on behalf of these individuals. I love it because then on the opposite side of that work is the testimonies. Message after call after message after call. Apostle, the Lord did this, he did this, he did this. Many people are talking to me, don't even know they were being interceded for. Just brought me the answer to that, that the Lord, uh, as I was interceded, brought the answer to the intercession, didn't even know it. And many of you are being called to that same place. So if you don't like prayer right now, please understand it's okay. Because the Lord's going to transform you and build you up to it. I did not start here 31 years ago. Neither will you. You're in your proper place. The key is making sure you don't dig your heels in. When you're called on, let me say this to all the servants of the Lord. The old, the old preachers used to tell us, always be ready. Be ye ready, they would say in short. Be ye ready. When you're called on, be ye ready. You preachers ought to be on the altar so tough you always have a word in your spirit on standby. You should never be without a word because you don't know who the Lord's going to draw to you or put you in their path. And it could be a word of counseling. It could be, you know, the Holy Ghost word is so powerful. I've, I go through week after week where the Lord will give me one word and he'll give me a, a giant, he'll talk to me about, he'll give me a giant conversation we're having. And inside of that conversation, a word comes for this one that one this person that person this that, and that one word that one altar time is working the whole entire week of what everybody needs he'll give me a word uh and it might be for sunday hey we're gonna see this sunday and all week long that oracle keeps coming to everybody who comes into contact with me you're headed there okay so please don't we have to get the right mindset here the lord our father is a king he's not asking he's not suggesting it's the lord gave the lord told me or the lord commanded me we are our language needs to be holy we are not serving a king that asks anything and see the problem this is some of this is hyper grace infecting us oh the lord asked me you know what the problem with that is there are some things uh, when you say ask you're you're almost immediately placing conditions on the parameters commands are not conditional they come with judgment and when you get into the mindset the lord asked me you could easily miss the warning of judgment in the command you could easily miss the warning of judgment it come upon you and then all of a sudden you're in trouble and you say lord how did i get here because you took what he said as a asking and a suggestion rather than a command. And I would be remiss, knowing the Holy Ghost is speaking this, not to put this on the floor. He is not asking us. The Lord gave me, told me, or commanded me. And we need to be clear. Because when you start, the Lord asks me, you could easily miss his oracle of command. And his commands come with divine consequences and judgments. Some more stiff and harsh in nature than others but none of them where you're going to be comfortable raise your hand if you've ever violated the holy ghost and the consequence was comfortable i have yet to experience that and it's not it's not existent even by the scripture because the lord says those i love i do what chastise and he says it doesn't seem good for the moment it's not comfortable so the scripture is telling us that there's no time the Lord chastises is going to be comfortable, but afterwards yields the uh, peaceable fruit of righteousness. Okay, so Sister Shandy, I'm telling you, these are things we really have to understand. Okay, uh, oh, I'm telling you, I bless the Lord too, Sister Shandy. Listen, we have to understand this. These are critical things. And, and when we come out of these hyper grace churches that many are coming out of, it's not an issue. The Lord is waiting on you. The Lord is ready for you. The Lord is ready to transform. He's ready to clear out the toxicity. He's ready to get rid of the poison. And he's also ready to fill us up and give us the spirit-filled life that everything we do and say is in him. All right? We really need to understand this on tonight. So I bless the Lord for Sister Barbara. Bishop V kicked us off. Uh, Elder Vanell anchored us and, 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 and took us on to the finish line. And... Um,
And I bless the Lord for all the testimonies. Those of you that missed Evangelist Lakeithia last night, Lakeithia Lockridge on Facebook, that message is there. It's all over our pages. It's in the hubs. We shared it everywhere. Please do yourself a favor and invest in yourself. Go back and watch that video. The concern was holiness or hell. Those of you, and you need that message, and you need the one from last Sunday, which was not this past Sunday, let me say it carefully, because if you go to this past Sunday, you get me. Go to the last Sunday, not the past Sunday, but the one before, you get Elder Vanell, and the message is on suffering, and we need this. Saints, I have to, when when, a pot, when uh, Elder V was speaking, the Holy Ghost uh, spoke to me right while he's speaking, and we need to understand this. If the old saints used to say, we're a soldier in the army of the Lord, do you not know when you sign up, you're signing your life on the dotted line? This needs to be said again, and it's going to be said royally in our time. If you're an army, the scripture, the, the Bible tells us to endure hardness as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're a soldier in the army of the Lord, and he is the Lord of Sabaoth, which is translated the Lord of Heaven's armies, okay, Earth's two in terms of the body of Christ, okay, can I, can I, can I, we, we have to, we have to consider this. If you're an army, if you're a soldier in the army of the Lord, how did it not cross your mind that you may have to give your life in this army? Because so it is natural, so it is spiritual, okay? You can go, all my new believers, go right to Revelation 6. The fifth seal is the martyrs underneath the throne of God crying for justice. Lord, when will you avenge our blood? We're talking Zechariah. We're talking all of the apostles, Isaiah. We're talking all, uh, all the prophets, many of the prophets, many many of those that are major and minor, many of those who, whose names are in the Torah but not necessarily wrote a book. Okay, and so uh, I was the Holy Ghost had me studying Zechariah, who they stone with stones. Okay, because he gave the word of the Lord. All right, so we need to understand these things. Okay, we really need to understand these things. We really have to get this. All right, if you're a soldier in the army of the Lord, I'm not saying you're going to be comfortable with this. This is something you build up to, but you need to be in this process because I'm going to tell you something, saints. We must not fool ourselves that persecution won't cross into America and we start being persecuted for being believers. It's already happening on social media. It's one day. You know, in Rome, they were persecuting. They began to persecute believers in word first, and then, they, then it ended up in the flesh. We need to understand this. It starts with the word first. Once that word shows up, and then that labeling shows up. We're all we've already crossed those two echelons. The next one is they're going to start taking flesh. Are you ready tonight? You want to be rapture ready. You want to be. Uh, uh, you want to ask the Holy Ghost to help you be uh, martyrdom ready. Okay. D don't get so comfortable. Oh, you know what? It's it's never happened here before. That doesn't mean it won't. And the fact that we've killed 65 million children and America is the leader of the profanization of the Lord's word and name in the world today would suggest that if it was going to start anywhere first, it would start in our land first. And I need to tell you, all of the individuals coming from overseas, listen, America's always had immigrants. We never had a tidal wave like this. And I'm going to tell you the number one procurer of who the Lord would permit to do this would be Islam. And they've already breached our borders. If you don't realize that, you're late. And by the way, can I say this? They've been here since the 80s. Hello, somebody in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. So please don't act like they just got here. They've been here. And now there's a high concentration of them coming here. Okay, and we need to understand this. This is not to put anybody in fear, but sticking your head in the sand is not mature and it's not going to save you from it either. We need to be ready. Okay, and, I'd re and I'm going to do what the Holy Ghost tell me to do because none of you can answer for me and I certain I'm not going to answer for you. So I, w I could not be the Lord's leader. Read, we read on Sunday, First Lady read it, matter of fact, our Old Testament scripture, Jeremiah 1, beginning at the 16th verse, and then going to the end there. The Lord said, if you do not speak the word I've commanded, I will, conf I will confound you before them. 
Preachers, don't let these people fool you. Preach what the Holy Ghost tell you. We had a message, uh, confusion of faces out of the, uh, I believe it's right around Daniel, the ninth chapter. And the Lord says, I'll give you a confusion of faces. Jeremiah 1, I will confound you before them. Saints, you do not. I'm telling you, Sister Shandy, they've been here since the 80s, but they are coming. They are flooding in here now. These are the same people the Holy Ghost warned Israel of. They have a tongue that is hard for you to understand. And they will not spare man, woman, child, boy, girl, young, and old. These are their descendants that have overtaken the U.S. now. They're here, and they're here in large quantities. And I had a police officer who's a personal friend of mine in New York City tell me that they went to a synagogue one time to ask them to move their vehicles, and the guy came out and told them, turn around and go back to where you came from. Told the officers this in New York City. Because we've gotten rid of some of yours before, and we will do it again. He threatened my friend and the other young officer that was with him who was mouthing off. Police chief said, hey, he told all the, everybody in that area, get in your cars and come back to the station. He, the police chief pulled them all out of there. Saints, this has already breached our border. You're just unaware of it. Now you're aware of it. Okay, so now what does that tell us? You need to be interceding like never before. Take your prayer time serious. These people are here. And I need to say this too. The Lord will permit them. This is what you don't want to tangle with. The Lord will permit them. He permitted them on Israel. And Israel killed thousands of their children. We've killed 65 million and count some estimate as high as 70 so far. If you don't, and the Lord said, I have no respect to persons. If you don't think he will do this to the U.S., not only are, I would say, more than not being spirit-filled, you're just naive. It's going to happen to the U.S. at some point. Not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. And what we want is that this does not happen in our time. We can receive a reprieve here if we will get on our faces and pray together. I praise the Lord that as I've been on my face, the Holy Ghost has shown me many of you have heeded his word and, and sacrificed some time in the midnight hour. At your sleeping hour, many of you are be, have sacrificed time. And there's still some of you that need to take this seriously and begin to sacrifice your time. But I praise the Lord, there's been movement on your part. The Lord has shown me as I've been before him, there's been movement on the saints part in the North American Watchmen's Council. Many of you that are still hanging on to your sleep, lose 20 minutes, lose in half an hour, lose 10, start where you can and the Holy Ghost will honor you. Some of you are praying about things and the Lord has blessed you in general, but you're praying for some specificity and your specificity is being holed up because you won't obey this command. The Lord is saying we need to lose a little sleep here and he will grant us this reprieve. We don't want these people, they are here. Have you seen what they've done in France? It's already begun there. The police are a fear to go in many areas where they are. They've already, uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali, um, who's a now believer, many years ago she did a film. And the Muslims killed this brother, the, the, the filmmaker, who happens to be related to the famous painter Van Gogh. It's one of his, uh, it's like the great, great grandson or something. They murdered him right in the middle of the street. Saints, this has already begun in the Eastern Hemisphere of the world and now in the Western Hemisphere. It's in France. It's in the UK. Bishop's been to the UK. They're not Joe. As a matter of fact, they actually overtook the government there and then told him, hey, you don't like it. You can leave the country. In the UK, I'm talking about where he just said he was. Saints, this has already breached the, the, uh, the Western Hemisphere. It just hasn't happened here yet to the degree it's happened there, but we've already had incidents. It's just one kick up and we're there. Okay, so I thank the Lord as we're praying. Let me say this. Let, let me talk about the bright spot here. As we were interceding, we asked the Lord to remove these university presidents who got before Congress and started tap dancing and start, well, the one at Columbia, they, she's been, she's resigned and she stepped out. That's the prayer of the saints. Let's continue to pray.
We got a few more we're praying on to get out of there, out of these seats at Harvard, out of these. And Harvard, there's been many of the Ivy League where they've already resigned. But we got a few more trying to, a few more little, you know, pests trying to hold on there. We're going to pray them right up out of there. Okay, so we're, we're, there are seats changing in Congress before we get to uh, uh, November. So, saints, we, this is the time to intercede. This is not the time to be lackadaisical on the altar. Get on the altar with us. We're inviting you by the Holy Ghost, but he's commanding. We're inviting, he's commanding. Don't mistake the two. I'm inviting you to get on there with me. The Holy Ghost has shown me many of you have obeyed that command, but there's a few of you. You need to come on and make up your mind. I'm going to give, I'm going to give the Lord some midnight hour prayer. You're, yes, you're praying in the day. You're praying, you're praying as you go throughout your day. Wonderful. But the reprieve comes in the midnight hour. That's what the Lord has said. That's where he said. That's why he had Bishop V lead us 21 days, getting us shaped up for that midnight hour. Okay. And many of us, we were right there with them, but unfortunately there were a few that couldn't hang with us. Let's get, because the Lord will call us to those midnight oracles again. And this time, it might be you who he's calling and not necessarily the bishop. So prepare yourself, okay? He's gonna, this thing is gonna pass around here. Prepare yourself, okay? And as you're in prayer, the Holy Ghost may say, hey, let's go. The evangelist Keith, he was in prayer, the Holy Ghost said, hey, let's go. And she alerted us, and I'm with Elder Vanell. 20, listen, two minutes is good for me. I got two minutes when Apostle said, hey, I need you to go in there and lead the saints in prayer. Two-minute warning. Okay, good, let's go. And we, and we took care of business, okay? Some of you, we're all maturing at different levels, so you might need 20 minutes. Wonderful. Sometimes I need 20 minutes. Sometimes I need an hour, depending on. But most, most in general, I can step right in there, okay? This doesn't happen overnight, so don't take that as I need to be like that. No, you don't. Let the Holy Ghost progress you and take your time. I'm just saying to you what will be, what can be, and what we should be striving for. And let me tell you. I'm still striving in the Holy Ghost for more that he's showing me. He's, he has some things out in front of me I'm striving. Okay, so, um, Elder Vanell, if you can give us our schedule for the rest of the week, Bishop, if you can pray out, I got to run to the little boy's room, I'll be right back. And uh, Bishop, the, sir, the remainder of the service, uh, if you can pray us out. And um, First Lady, we bless the Lord for you leading us again on our Tuesday night testimony service. And um, I bless the Lord for all of you um, Uh, yes, sir. For many years, matter of fact. Um, and it varies because it, it, it started where the Lord would, I'm going to tell you how this started. Many years ago, the Lord woke me up and it was right at midnight and he gave me, that's why I quote this scripture often. It didn't just come to me now. It's been with me for decades. The Lord gave me, uh, it's in Psalms 119, right around the 61st, 62nd verse at midnight. Matter of fact, let me get it so we can be pinpoint accurate, okay? So we can be pinpoint accurate. Psalms, let me get it, let me get it for us. I want to be spot on with this one because it's critical. Okay, so, yeah. Psalms 119, 62, 63. At midnight, I will rise to give thee thanks. Uh, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment, thy companion of all them that fear the Lord, of them that uh, keep thy precepts. It's interesting in 64, which is the last verse, the earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statues. That's what, that's going to be the consequence when we intercede. The whole earth will become full of the Lord's mercy. Aren't we praying for the international community? We're praying mercy for all the nations right now. We've had that, that's been our mandate for several weeks now. Okay. So let me say this, all right? So yes, it started at that midnight hour, and then the Lord, and then it, it was midnight every night, and then the Lord, and then it started to vary, 2 a.m., the Spirit of the Lord wake me up. Then for a while, it was strictly 3 a.m. Every, every 3 a.m. in the morning, the Lord is unctioning me out of my sleep, and then he's, he, I'm praying, I, I begin to speak with him, he begins to show me oracles and show me many things that would come to pass and what he was going to have me preach and uh, where and how and all this different stuff, okay? And then there was a time at 5 a.m. the Lord would unction me every morning to wake up. That went on for several years. And then 
uh, when I came to Texas, uh, before I came to Texas, the Lord started waking me up at that midnight hour again. That was the hour, and he started, and, it, and he, it's like he took me right back to the beginning. And when I came to Dallas, Texas, it's that twelve. It's that. It's matter of fact. It's interesting now because it's not the 12 midnight hour. What it is, is the Lord starts calling me into prayer in that early night, 9, 10, 11, where I remain till 6, 30, 7, 30, 8, 30, 9, 30 in the morning. Sometimes it goes further than that. Sometimes when you're looking at me, you don't realize that I haven't been asleep for two days. And it's not bothering me because the Lord is empowering me. And you may not realize that, okay? I'm not putting that on everybody else. I don't make a doctrine out of that. I'm just answering Brother Leon's question. Yes. And let me tell you, it's a privilege for the Lord to wake you up like that. Don't complain. Don't murmur. Say, thank you, Lord. When the Holy Ghost wake you up like that, he's establishing something special with you. And you ought, to, you ought to count it as a privilege and an honor that the Holy Ghost would come. Listen, when heaven answers, when you talk to heaven, okay, it's a privilege. When heaven answers, it's numinous. And we need to know the difference. Okay, it is a privilege and an honor to be able to come boldly before the throne of grace. But when heaven speaks back, when heaven answers... Come on, for homework, some of us need to go back into 1 Kings. I believe it's right around the 8th chapter and read King Solomon when he prayed and what the Lord answered when the Shekinah glory filled the temple so strong. The scripture says none of the elders, nor him, none of the Levites, none of the priests could enter the temple for the glory of the Lord. We need to go back and read that. For homework, we need to read that and freshen ourselves up on that. All right? So, I had some oracles for us tonight, but again, testimony service, the Holy Ghost uh, commanded me to stand down, so I'm going to do exactly that, and um, and so, um, it's glorious, Sister Shandy, it absolutely is, and when the Holy Ghost wakes you, listen, saints, the Holy Ghost knows where he, whether he can trust you or not, that's not the issue here, he's all-knowing, he knows all things at all times, he's omniscient, it's not about him doing things so he can see if he trusts you. That suggests he's not all-knowing. It's blasphemy. He's all-knowing. But when the Lord does these things, the trust issue is not him knowing whether. The trust issue is him seeking you and saying, I want to draw you into a special place for me. He's seeking partnership with you, intimacy with you, Holy Spirit-filled union with you. I want to trust you with my mind and my works. It's not him saying, can I? It's him saying, I want to. I desire. I desire to trust you with this. I want to trust you with this. Will you come and partner with me and share in this burden with me, share in this work with me? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy, but it's still a yoke. And my burden is light, but it's still a burden. Will you come? He's saying, will you come share this with me? Will you come rest in this with me? We take that because of hyper grace. Oh, the Lord's called me to a life of comfort. No, no, no. He's saying, will you come rest? In other words, one connotation of the word rest means to settle down in. We're like a house, the foundation of a house settling. Will you come settle in to this secret place with me where I can give you my heart and my mind and give you my work files and you'll go carry out my edicts? Who will go for us? The prophet, the Lord said in the days of the prophet Isaiah, Sister Barbara did not sing that by accident tonight. Here I am, Lord, send me. Is that us tonight? Have you said to the Lord, here I am, Lord, send me, because I have for a long time ago, and I'm still saying it day by day, month by month, week by week, year by year, you get the, you get the flow. I'm still saying it minute by minute, second by second. Okay, so we need to understand this on tonight. Will you say yes, Lord, on tonight? Will you tell the Lord completely yes? My soul, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord. Even when I don't feel like it, even when it hurts, even when it's painful, even when I'm aggravated, even when I don't like how it looks and how it's going to turn out, completely yes, my soul. Come on, when the devil is talking to me and trying to convince me it's not worth it, my soul says yes. I, I love uh, Bishop uh, 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 out there in Chicago um, had, a, had an album many years ago, I still believe. I love to listen to that album. I'm, I'm going to seek that out and put that on for worship. This I still believe. 
Bishop Trotter, that's who it is. Bishop Trotter had an album, I still believe. He lost his wife to death. He lost his uh, house. He lost his job. Therefore, lose he lost everything. And the Lord restored him. And now he's got this, he's got his house again. He's got everything, but he's sitting in and he's lonely. But he said, Lord, I still believe. And that album was birthed out of his pain and out of the fiery trial. And then at that time, Bishop Marvin Sapp lost his wife. Bishop uh, um, F.W. Uh, F.D. Washington lost his wife. All these great bishops um, that are uh, connected to us lost their lost their wives at the time. I remember, Bishop F.D. Washington came out of New York City and he was minister. I said, oh, my Lord, all these great bishops, Bishop... Uh, uh, Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship Bishop, Bishop Walker, Joseph Walker III, lost his wife right, right around that time. And the Lord marvelously restored all these men of God. And the Lord began, and Bishop uh, F.W. Washington, he, he out of New York City, he ministered at that time the scripture where the Lord says, I will, stint, I will strengthen, I will settle you, I will establish you. That was, I'll never forget that message when he preached that. I was using that particular scripture was our scripture that night. And, 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 and none of us were ready for what he was getting ready to testify to. And he talked about how he lost his wife to cancer and all that entail. There wasn't a dry eye in the house that night. Saints, are you ready? Are you really ready for this? Are you ready to do this? That's why the North American Watchmen's Council and the body of Christ, the church, should be part hospital, part instructional classroom, part war room. It's to prepare you for service. We do know that we're in the kingdom to serve, right? So it's to prepare you for service, not to hurt you. It's not to harm you. I'm thundering against this apostate church because until their voices fall silent, the world can't hear ours. You need to understand where we are. There's a purpose for this. There's a purpose for calling men out who are doing this because the Lord is saying it's either I call you out by name or I allow you to perish in the lake of fire. I have to let you know, heaven, I am dissatisfied with you and you're on the brink of judgment. And this is my last stop I'm pulling out before you stand before me and I have to send you to the lake of fire. Saints, stay out of the Holy Ghost business and stay out of his work. Especially those of you that just got on the block and you have no long time experience with the Holy Ghost. You should be the last one speaking, okay, on these matters. Let us do what the Holy Ghost has called us to do. I had to tell young, one young leader, don't worry about what the Holy Ghost told me to do. You can't answer for it, no way. If I'm wrong and I get sent to the lake, it's between me and the Holy Ghost. If I'm right and you're standing there, if you're fortunate enough, and you see nine jewels in my crown, then you're going to know I didn't miss it. Either way, you can't speak for me. So let me do my job in the Holy Ghost. Point blank range. And you do yours. Okay? I won't get in your way, and you don't get in my way. All right? I have a mandate, and I'm clear on mine. And I know exactly what the Holy Ghost is doing with me, and I know what his assignment is, and I know what my work is every day. If you're not clear, don't spend your time worrying about what I'm doing. Spend your time getting clear. You need to be clear. You need to bear fruit. I'll take care of the Holy Ghost business he give me. You do the same. We can't answer for each other. I have, no, I have nothing critical to say when it comes to the servants of the Lord. Only the apostate church. I preach against, and by the way, this is in your scripture. I could take you scripture after scripture. We didn't have time tonight. But I could take you scripture after scripture and show you where the Lord, come at, they stone Zechariah. The Zechariah mentioned they stone him because the scripture says in the day when Jehoiada died, the, the, the priest, King Joash, this is the righteous one that sparked revival in Israel. He was entreated of these princes that came to Judah. And it says they all forsook the house of the Lord. And then they forgot. The kindness that Jehoiada, Jehoiada did to them. He lived 130 years old. The Lord, this man of God was so potent and powerful. He lived to be 130. He, lived, he beat Moses by 10 years. And nothing was wrong with him. And he died and said they forgot his kindness to them. And they killed his son, the prophet. And, jo and Joash said, the Lord look upon this thing and require it of us. And you know, the Lord did because he sent his two servants, a Moabitess, a Moabite and an Ammonite, slew Joash, the righteous king, killed him. He had a powerful start, but a deadly ending. And the Bible says the Lord wouldn't even let him be buried in the sepulchre of the kings. Joash was not buried with King David and the kings. Joash was buried outside the sepulchre of the kings. It was the Lord saying, you started well with me, but you didn't finish well. I, you've dishonored me, now I've dishonored you. 
don't finish this. Many started well, but you got to finish well. Will you say with me tonight, Holy Ghost, I'm determined to finish well. Oh, Lord, I'm not going to dishonor you that you turn around even in my death and dishonor me. And it's happening. I look at the one great preacher. 40 years he influenced a generation. But he fell from grace. And when he died, they, they stripped everything. They took all his messages off the shelf. They stripped his books off. You can't even hardly find his stuff. They shut the website down. You can't hardly find this guy's stuff anymore. I'm trying to think of his name. It'll come to me. But they shut Robbie, Z Robbie, Robbie Zachariah. They stripped everything. You can hardly find anything of his now. Okay, if we dishonor the Lord, saints, he will dishonor us. Don't fool yourself. You got more than enough scripture on it. Say with me tonight, Lord, we're going all the way in honor of you. We're going to preach what you tell us to preach. Minister what you tell us, man. We're not going to back down. We're not going to back off. And we're not going to water down or switch what you've given us. We're going full bore. How about you on tonight? All right. First lady, we have anything else before uh, Elder gives us a schedule and Bishop prays us out of here? No, I don't believe. We have anything else? I do want to say thank you for all that sh uh, that shared their testimony um, on this evening, and and I wanted to say my, uh, myself to Evangelist Lakeithia, thank you for um, for your wisdom and your ministering on um, for us last night for everyone last night, um, and everyone have a good night. That's all I have. We're sending you blessed to for you. Thank you so much for your leadership each and every Tuesday night testimony services. That was a blessing and honor to start our week, uh, most of our weeks, rather, uh, with this service on tonight. So that was a blessing to hear the saints and receive the testimonies of the saints. So I thank the Lord for hearing the call and answering the call. We are all being blessed by it. And uh, the services are going to grow. And we look, look forward to that, not just in terms of yourself, but also those that are coming. The, these services are going are to fill up. And the more we evangelize and the more we're, you know, we spread the gospel, there's going to be more and more testimonies. Yes. Yeah, so, beautiful. absolutely. I'm, we're all looking forward to it. So, I'm going to give you all uh, this, your service for the rest of the week. Join us tomorrow. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. The Good Bishops. Bishop Beryl, Bishop Sheba of Demi House of Restoration are going to bless us with our Wednesday night Bible study on tomorrow night. Uh, please join us for that service. It is always power packed. Come get this good imported Canadian oil that's overflowing from their last trip, the latest trip rather, uh, to Toronto. The oil is, has been poured out and we are being blessed by it. So please come on tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for Wednesday night Bible study. The same time on Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. We are having the Prophetic Roundtable on tonight, once, once again, led by Bishop Spiro and Bishop Shiva out of the Man House of Restoration. I believe also this Thursday, because every other Thursday, Kingdom Bible Study takes place on Thursdays. And so I believe this Thursday, Kingdom Bible Study will take place at 7.30 on this Thursday, uh, led by uh, Apostle Dr. Rhonda Ferguson's uh, ministry empowered to live so we're going to have kingdom bible study at 7 30 the link is on her empowered to live facebook page so uh, please go to her facebook page you will find the link for every, for each one of her services for uh, kingdom bible study it's every tuesday at 7 30 p.m eastern standard time 6 30 p.m central standard time and every other thursday so this thursday is the thursday that they're going to have service so we have two services this thursday kingdom bible study at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, and then followed by uh, the bishops at Dominion House of Restoration for the Prophetic Roundtable. Uh, saints, the uh, the Holy Ghost has uh, has unctioned Bishop Barrow, Bishop Shiva to open up the, the, the Prophetic Roundtable Thursday at 8.30 p.m. So please join us. Uh, as the Holy Ghost leads, they release the link in Zoom. Uh, please come in and, and participate. Be a part. Uh, bear some fruit. Be a part of the service that the Lord is doing with us in the kingdom of God. We, we welcome you all to all of our, uh, many of our services, not all of them at the North American Washington Council are opened up. So please, please, please uh, listen to the, listen to uh, the, the unction of the Holy Ghost, listen to the leading of the Holy Ghost. If you have a word from the Lord, if you have a message, even if you don't have anything that the Lord has given you to share, but you want to be in attendance, be in the number, 
please do so. We would love to have you in service. We are, we are not those that hoard ministry. And we and, and unlike others, we, we do love seeing uh, the saints and seeing the, the saints serve with us, especially the newer believers. It blesses us. Many of y'all don't know that, but we are we're giddy in the spirit when we see you all join us in service and, and serve with us. It's an honor and a privilege. And so we count it an honor to be amongst you all. So please join us on Thursday uh, for Kingdom Bible Study at 730 Eastern Standard Time and then 830 for a prophetic roundtable. If we're a little late, it's because we're in the Kingdom Bible Study. Don't fret. As soon as we're done with Kingdom Bible Study, we'll switch over to the prophetic roundtable. Friday, we have our NBC class, our New Believers class, once again led by the bishops, Bishop Rebbe Bishop Shiva of Dominion House of Restoration. Uh, I have been attending those classes uh, in the background with camera off, listening, and I just want to say it is truly a blessing to see the growth of the new believers and the growth of the class in number as well. I bless the Lord for what he is doing in that new believers class and to see many of them now serving in our services. It's a testimony to the work and the fruit that uh, that the Lord is bearing through the new believers and also through Bishop Vera, Bishop Sheba as well. So we truly bless the Lord for what he's doing mightily through you both. The Lord is good. Saturdays at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Oh, I for, thank you, the ghost. I forgot one service. I believe we are ministering to Washington Community Church of Pakistan. This Thursday it is normally 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link for that is going to be in the uh, in the North American, North American Watchmen Facebook Hub and also the IPBS Facebook Hub, Facebook Messenger Hub. So if you're not in those hubs, reach out to myself. Any of the other leaders, we'll make sure you get added so you can get all of our announcements for all of our services. I do believe we are ministering to Pakistan uh, this Thursday as well. Saturday, we have an international prophetic Bible study. It takes place at noon, Eastern Standard Time, 11 Central Standard Time. Uh, we, we come in an hour earlier, which is 10 a.m. Central Standard Time and 11 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time for worship. Uh, and it is true worship. We're not in there goofing off. Um, we'll have music. We'll have music playing. We'll be worshiping. Uh, ushering in the presence of the Lord before we start service uh, uh, at noon on Eastern uh, on East Coast time. So please join us uh, at 11 for worship and then 12 uh, Eastern Standard Time for the IPBS. And then Sundays, we have uh, Sundays. Uh, we have. Oh, thank you. Elios. We are in and we are part. We are. We started an 11 week module. So we are doing a prophetic roundtable for the next 10 plus weeks. There's a couple of weeks we're going to be off because we'll be ministering in North Carolina. We, we, we kicked off an 11 week module on holy leadership. The first uh, focus for this past Saturday was substance. This upcoming Saturday, the focus will be on markers. So we are having a prophetic, uh, the I'm sorry, we're having a theological roundtable for the next 10 plus weeks. And so many of the saints, including myself, Bishop Verrill, uh, Bishop Shiva, uh, uh, First Lady, Lady Jen, uh, Sister Shandy, uh, and so many others, uh, Apostle Dr. Rana Ferguson. There are so many of us that are part uh, of this uh, theological roundtable. It is a blessing. Last Saturday was absolutely amazing, and, and it, we loved it. So please join us. It's a different format. We may be shorter than our normal IPBS services, but if you miss it, don't worry about it. It's still going to be on our pages, and also we'll go uh, to Facebook once the media team uh, has uh, has it prepared. I just want to warn you that the, but now through the end of the year, we're going to be in this theological roundtable, hearing the mind of the Lord through the various leaders uh, in the council and also those that have been uh, invited. Many of you uh, weren't invited yet, but you will be uh, in, the, in the very near future, so just be prepared for that. Those that have been called, you know who you are. Be prepared. We look forward to hearing what the Lord uh, is going to speak through you as well doing this uh, theological roundtable of the International Prophetic Bible Study. Sunday, we have our Sunday morning worship gathering, 10, 10 30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 11 30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, led by our own uh, Apostle Cox and uh, Lady Jane Cox of Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, and all of the leaders of Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas serve uh, in that service, primarily um, our leaders, the Coxes. Myself, Elder Brunel, Evangelist Akethia, who preached a powerful word uh, last night. Please go to her Facebook page uh, if you did not if you did not get a chance to listen to it. Holiness or Hell 
You need to hear the word of the Lord. It was powerful. If you missed it, please go back and watch it. Uh, that That is all of our uh, services, um, our regular services, but we have a special, special, special service on this upcoming Sunday, the inaugural, the inaugural, excuse me, let me be able to speak, right? The inaugural Women of War. The inaugural Women of War Women's Gathering is going to be this Sunday, August 25th at 6.30 Central Standard Time, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. We are we are so excited for this service. Uh, honestly, yeah. I felt bad because we've kicked off our Mighty Men of Valor service, <laughs> led by myself, and we've had three of them already. And I felt bad because I, I felt like we were leaving the ladies <laughs> behind. <laughs> but I bless the Lord uh, that... Uh, the first uh, the first meeting they're having is going to be this Sunday, and yes. I, so we are we are asking we are calling all of the women and women only, yes, all the women and women only to come out this Sunday, six thirty p.m. Central Standard Time, seven thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join the women of join the women aboard the North American Watchmen's Council. It is led by. Uh, Bishop Sheba, Apostle Dr. Rhonda Ferguson, and our own First Lady, uh, Lady Jen Cox. It is going to be powerful. Holy Spirit is going to show up, and Holy Spirit is going to move uh, in that women's gathering. Uh, please be advised, we don't we don't tolerate any foolishness. So uh, that's from the ladies or from the men. So men, please do not show up in this service. We will come. We will come. We will come deal with you in love if you do. Please do not show up in the service. We have our own Mighty Men of Valor Men's Gathering. The next one is going to be September 9th at 7.30, at 7 p.m., excuse me, Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for the men's gathering. We have separate men's and women's gatherings. So men and women, please be respectful of those gatherings. Men, please show up for the Mighty Men of Valor's gatherings. Women, please show up for the Women of War gatherings. Please do not, and we say this respectfully, we love you all, but please do not show up with any foolishness and please do not be in a service in which uh, you are not uh, invited or slated to attend. Let us be respectful of each other uh, and let's do the work of the Lord together. That is our uh, announcements uh, for uh, for the rest of this week. We bless Lord for each and every one of you that joined us on tonight for the Tuesday night testimony. I will turn over to Bishop Vero uh, to pray us out uh, at this time. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you again, First Lady, for for having us. It's always a, a, a beautiful time because this testimony service is a time to see how the Lord is moving on behalf of those that love him. And I need a testimony every day. I, it, I If I woke up with breath in my lungs, that's a testimony. That's what the old saints used to testify about. And I love the fact to come forward with something. And many of you have testimonies and you should be, or you should be looking for testimonies for the Lord to work, work through you to show himself strong on your behalf. Now, we're transitioning into prayer. Uh, be active. Whatever you're seeking the Lord for, begin to type it in the chat now, whether it be loved ones, whether it be healing, whether it be mercy for nations, uh, whether it be your specific locale or area, you may know something we don't know. Type it in faith because the Bible says the prayer prayers of a righteous man, man or woman, avails much. So we expect to see answers. We're not praying for for the sake of 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 habit or religious asceticism. We're praying because we have a relationship with the Lord. And Jesus said men ought always to pray lest they faint. And there are many fainting because there's no prayer life. There are many fainting because they're not connecting to the power source. And in order for us to see a difference, we must participate in prayer. And that's why our testimonies are changing, because we pray, we receive a word from the Lord, and then the Lord shows up on our behalf because he, his word will not return unto himself void. Not because we're anything, but because he's bound himself in all his power to his word so when you're in a place where the word of god is not just the word of a man not just any man but the word of god the rhema spoken word you have to take action you have to take action and and i'll 
get this little nugget. The Lord is speaking to me about uh, Ezekiel 47, that there are some that are confident or comfortable at that ankle level water. So in Ezekiel 47, the water, the healing waters that flow from the temple was dispensed in different levels. It was ankle level, it was knee level, waist level, and then it was so high you had to swim in it. And some come into the ankle level water and are fine. I'm okay just this logging into the Facebook chat. I'm, I'm okay just logging in with the Facebook group, but some of you should be in the New Believers class. The New Believers class is not a class indefinitely for all people. You should be progressing through it. The New Believers class this year should not be the same people a year or two from now. You should be progressing through it. It's hyper speeding up, then that should be evident and is evident in the New Believers class. Because Elder V made that point that those that are in the class are now participating in other services. What does that tell you? That the power of God is, is propelling and pushing people according to the word that has been spoken. Amen. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. We give your name glory because you have you have given us this opportunity to sit at the feet of the master, to sit and hear of your service, to sit and see the, the testimonies that you have done through us, to, to see your power, your wonder working power working in and through our midst, Lord. Your word says that this grace should abound to all, that all things are for us, that the grace may abound, that thanksgiving would redound to your name. And as we're here testifying, testifying about Jesus, we're thankful that these things are being recorded. We're thankful that our, serv our servitude and our diligence is being recorded as we're faithful over these small things. Lord, you said you will make us rulers over much, Lord. May the, may the gifts, the gifts that lay dormant come forward. Now, as we saw with uh, Evangelist Lakeithia yesterday, and as Apostle testified that the thing that was in her was in her mother, just like Timothy, that the faith that was in his grandmother, God, is seen now, is witnessed by men. May those glory carriers come forward now and be transitioned from mediocre living to powerful living, from fear to faith, for we're not given again to a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power and the sound mind and god we thank you that this word is living to capture every idea that exalts itself above the knowledge of christ for wherever we want to be comfortable lord let this word capture that idea and bring it low and bring it high bring the thought high that says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me so may we go forward in power may we go forward in faith for the the spirit lifts where it wills when we follow the wind of the spirit and and wherever your spirit goes, Father, take us with you. And may we not ever depart or grieve the spirit. God, change the words that we speak, that the word in our home will be seen, that the, that, that the word of righteousness will be made known unto all men. Because the word says, if, if, if our gospel be hid from those in darkness, they won't be transformed. For the, the, the prince of power whom you have set us against, we we, we, we we're come that those that sit in darkness will see a great light and may this light shine ever so brightly. May we be like a, a, a city set up on a hill that all men can come, not because of who we are, but because of who we are in you. God, hide us in your hide us in the image of your son. Hide us so that your son is seen by all men. God, decrease our flesh and increase your spirit that we can go forward confidently, that we can run and not faint, that we walk and not get weary, that we wait on your spirit to model wings like eagles and fly that we will we will transgress from faith to faith and glory to glory that we will work the word line upon line precept upon precept god that we will put aside all ungodliness that we will put aside unrighteousness that we will put aside uh uh uh, uh adultery and the works of the flesh lying cheating stealing effeminate effemininess in the name of Jesus, God, oh Lord, arise and let your enemies be scattered. Those in 
enemies of, a, of the cross, Lord, allow us to be conscious of the suffering that must take place, the suffering for your glory, the suffering for this grace. God, God, rod out and, and, and deliver us from this hyper grace message where we want comfort and believe you just called us to be comfortable. When in your word says that if we walk with you and trust in you and know you, we shall do great things, not the other way around. Father, give us a word, the word that settles us, the word that gives us peace. Peace beyond all understanding. In the name of Jesus, God, God, anoint, anoint, uh, um, remove the scales from our eyes. Anoint us for this season. Anoint us for this day. Let your word be sown on good ground that even the words that came forward in testimony. Father, let our lives be transformed. Let us run confidently after a truth. Let our roots grow over a wall or any boundaries that have been set before us. We break through them. We go over them. We run around them because of the grace. Because of the anointing, Father, let uh, may Jesus not be asleep in our life where storms come. We will rely on the Lord. Uh, let our faith increase in this season, Lord. Help our unbelief for the areas we're not believing you, for the areas we're leaning on the flesh, for the areas we, we, we're, we're operating on the word other than yours, a word contrary to yours. God, may we put aside these childish things and may we go forward with the power. May we go forward with the cleansing and confidence of the blood that you've forgiven us of everything and may we continually and perpetually put these things before you, Lord. We're thankful that you have given us this day, that we may come before you your throne of grace boldly may be seen in our life that we stood with the king. Even though we may be unlearned in the things of God, may it be known that we sat with Jesus, that we sat in service and Jesus was here. For your word says where two or three are gathered, he is there. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, there's need, there, 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 there's healing needed. There's healing needed. Lord, Lord, we're calling out uh, 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 Apostle Jeremiah and his mother, Mother Rosetta, Aunt Vosil, Vosil, uh, in the name of Jesus, God. Uh, and even those that, that have placed things in the chat, like, like a deeper prayer life, God, for we need to connect with you. We need to be able to walk with you in the name of Jesus, Lord, the grace of for addictions to be broken, Lord, the same grace that 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 took the bottle, the taste of the bottle from my life, the same grace, the same power, the same anointing that took the, the desire for woman away from me, Lord. God, let that grace impact everybody that's struggling with addiction. Lord, Lord, for Sister Angelina that asks for prayer, Lord, whatever she needs in her life, if she needs more grace, if she needs understanding, revelation, if she needs a touch. God, she needs healing. God, she's not a believer. And she needs the light of the gospel. May it find her wherever she is, Lord, even the angels now. Lord, we're asking that you release angels to find her wherever she is. And for the prayer she asked for, the things she didn't ask for, she shall receive. Like salvation, first and foremost. Like the baptism and filling of the Spirit, secondarily. Father, may she be drawn into the kingdom for such a time as this. For those that are wrestling in flesh. For those that are struggling with things of the flesh, cast aside these weights that will so easily beset you and trust and believe that God has given you his word, has given you his leaders, that, that has given you pastors after his own heart to give you knowledge and understanding. Follow and obey and you shall be set free. In the name of Jesus, all glory belong unto you. All dominion belong unto you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, Lord. Make the path wide before us for the end enemy seeks to hinder what you have already called us to do. The enemy seeks to hinder and stop what you have put before us. But God, we know that your word is true. We know that you sit high and look low. We know that earth is, 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 is yours. Heaven is, is your throne and earth is your footstool. May your worship go forward. May your glory go forward. May, may, may the workings of our hands be pleasing in your sight, Lord. May the testimony of our lips be pleasing unto you, Father. May, may, may we hear in the end good and faithful servant, Lord, for those that are wrestling, for those that are struggling with things that are greater than us. Like David said, Lord, release angels to fight on our behalf as 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 Daniel sat in the lion's den because he prayed toward the 
temple where Solomon gave a decree that whoever prays toward this place, their prayers will be answered. And now, now we have the spirit resting inside of us, the temple now inside of us. These prayers, Lord, let these prayers reach heaven. Let the prayers in this chat reach heaven. Lord, let the people that are placed before you reach your throne. Let the tears that have reached your heaven now be answered. Let the tears that have reached the angels now be answered, Lord, for the children, for the children that have ways that need to be orchestrated, for children that are yet to be brought into the kingdom, for those unsaved family members, God, send heirs of, of salvation, send the angels to bring them forward, send angels to bring, because you first loved, loved us, therefore we can be loved. God, may we walk in this grace. May we walk in this glory. Lord, bless the ministries, Dominion House, community, uh, Cox Community Church, uh, 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 Watchman's Church of Pakistan, and Power to Live, and those that will come in. Father, remove all lethargic, remove all complacency. God, quicken us and we will call your name. Quicken us by your spirit. Strengthen us by your spirit. Revive us again. Let there be fire shut up in our bones for those that want to go left and they should go right. May the spirit lead and guide them. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask for your mercy. Mercy in the international uh, community. We're not appointed to wrath, but Lord, the 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 the, the threat of World War Three. We understand the, the 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 complications and the implications of it, and we're seeking mercy. May this this living water now flow from these temples to change the land, to change those desert those desert places to change those barren places. Oh, Lord of the breaker, go before us. Go before us and change the, the lives of the people in North Carolina. Go before, before us and change those that are sit, sitting and speaking uh, 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 the speakings of evil, the the, 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 the altars of evil that, that have been erected, the enemies of the cross, the enemies of God. Lord, if they won't be converted, drop them. Lord, if they won't be converted, let them, let them pass away for whoever is not aligned to your plan lord speed up their time it's a hyper speeding up then speed them up speed them up into their demise lord but we seek mercy for all that you know all things for all that will be transformed for all that will give their life to you father may the word find them immediately expeditiously that they can have reprieve that they can witness to others that the light will will shine forward and it cannot be cannot be stopped darkness will not comprehend it. and lord we're thankful that whatever we do we'll always outflank outsmart and cover the enemy from an elevated position we don't rest on our laurels we don't rest in the work of the flesh but we trust in the lord teach our hands to war and fingertips to fight in this day and in this battle may we be conscious of the prayers that we're offering may the fire on our altar never go out in the name of jesus and as men and women continue to draw lord we're thankful that they always have something because you're here in our midst wherever you are there is liberty where the where the spirit of the god where the spirit of god is there is liberty may we be disciples of your word disciples of the things that christ showed us and as christ did what he saw you do may we also walk in the ways that we see you operate god Father, we pray for mercy. We pray for mercy individually in our in the United States. We pray for mercy across seas, mercy in, in France, in London, where 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 ministries have dropped the ball. Father, forgive us for those areas where we have not held the standard of the word. Forgive us for our carnality, those things that we've touched and we shouldn't have when we have not obeyed your word. Forgive us for, for treating you like a regular human God and not adhering to your all-wise, all-knowing, every, every, your, um, your omnipotence, your, your omnipresence. God, forgive us for our, our treating you as common. Father, we're asking for peace, peace that the world can't give. God, for we, if we continue to walk in the ways that you have declared for us, let your word be a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path that we will not stumble, that we will not fall, that we will not falter in a day of calamity. God, cover us in your complete armor. Cover us in your complete armor that we can wage war and wield the spirit the sword of the spirit skillfully in the name of Jesus break those free that are need and need 
of 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 uh, freedom from demonic oppression, from uh, psychological strongholds of doubt of fear. Got all these things that you haven't prescribed, but but the enemy has prescribed. Lord, Lord, we're we're asking for divine healing and complete restoration. Lord, we're asking for freedom from sin. God, empower us because you have given us power over sin and let sin not master us. Lord, any doors that have been opened, any doors that have been opened from the ways of sin to the ways of sin, anyone being mastered by sin, let them now encounter the master of all. God, God, Elohim Adonai, Lord, the master of all. God, let us rest and, and, and abide with, with your mastering that the sin will not have mastery over us anymore. Wherever we've uh, partnered with the enemy, wherever our body has aligned uniquely with the enemy, Lord, break it in the name of Jesus. For our weapons, although we walk after the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. For our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the word of God, to the breaking of strongholds break those strongholds now lord break strongholds of religiosity break strongholds of hyper grace break strongholds of unforgiveness that your people that your children can be made free and that they can walk according to your word not to not partner with you and you do the work only, but as we walk with you and partner with you, Lord, let there be peace. Let there be understanding, revelation, wisdom. God, let, let there be an, an illumination of your word. May we walk in new dimensions and know the secrets for it is given to us to know the secrets of heaven and it has not been given to the world. We expect to see this word and have been seeing this word manifest in our life. May we take the glory, may we take the anointing Everywhere we stand, there is no place off limits for the Lord. Evil will not rule over us for your church. The, the on this rock that we stand, this rock that is Christ, the gates of hell shall not prevail against. May we have a continual revelation and understanding of your anointing, of your son, of the sacrifice, Lord. For 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 the, the families that have been placed in the chat, may you give a, a, a unique anointing to those that have uh, your your, the, your burden for the their families and, and putting them in on the altar before you for the unsaved family members Lord we're asking for wisdom for them to be drawn Lord we're asking for one and done marriages and of course forgiveness and that that one million Bibles can go forward in this world father we thank you for all things we we, 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 we pray for the reversal and the breaking of of word curses word curses that we've partnered with word curses that we've allowed to to take hold like Joe when he said the thing that I feared have come upon me God reprogram reset and and purify cleanse our heart cleanse our mind cleanse our spirit cleanse us try us now in these things lord may our prayer life now be 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 focused and fashioned after the apostles that we will care more for our brother and sister that we would consider them more highly than we consider ourselves father may we go forward as a true soldier that we will stand in a day of calamity that after we've done all to stand may we stand there for with those that are bent over may they touch the hem of of your garment to receive virtue to be healed for those that have healings or that need request healings for for things that the doctors say cannot be done may they receive supernaturally supernatural uh healing supernatural uh uh reprieve from whatever these ailments are especially things like cancer and arthritis and 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 and, and ungodly uh 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 Fog, uh, fog of the mind, mind binding, mind binding spirits, Lord, deliver us with your word, deliver us with your right hand of power and allow us to walk in your way and, and consider your word not to be set free just to go back to doing the same old thing. God, we give your name glory. We thank you for, for this time. We thank you for the testimony. May the testimonies continue to go forward. May those that are fearful now receive word to, to operate under the power power of God for Paul said uh, uh, I will boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me for anyone that's wrestling with fear may they rest 
and boast in their infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon them. Go forth and prosper. May we go forward and prosper in your word. May we prosper because the word is in our heart. May we prosper because we studied you. May we prosper because our eyes and heart are staying on you. May we prosper because we are asking for your burden. May we prosper because we have a heart for the lost, the widows, the orphans. In the name of Jesus. We're thankful for the cross. We're thankful for the baptism on the cross that we're dead. We're dead to life. We're dead to sin and alive in him because he died for us. We are risen with him. We give your name all the glory and all the power in Jesus mighty name. We ask for your mercy continually. Father, lead us in this day on our tomorrow. May may souls continually be drawn. May the testimony of Christ continually be given. As we leave this place, God place a, a unction and an anointing to track and, 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 and lead each and every one of us according to your plan and purpose. May we not uh, falter and be uh, snatched. May the word not be snatched. May the fowler not capture us. May, may uh, 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 the scent that has been given out from our sin life, if there is sin in our life, may it be cut off and forgiven and given over to you that it can be cast into the sea, never to be remembered again. Lead us with your hand of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Thank you, Bishop Darrell, for closing us in prayer. And thank you for um, Elder Rennell for the schedule. And if anybody wants to um, be a part of any of our services, you can reach out to any of the leaders here in the council. We can put you in the hubs. If you guys have a testimony or want to come on Testimony Live, please let us know. And we can get you on uh, next week or we can schedule a time. Um, we love you all, and I'm going to release the Facebook Live, and then I'm going to release the, um, the Zoom Live. Have a good night, everyone. Blessings to you all.